Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm gonna call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for Saturday, November 14th, 2020 to order. The time is now 9.03 a.m. Uh, we are still doing these meetings via Zoom because of the COVID-19 situation that exists, as well as Governor Wolf's stay at home orders and state of emergency declaration. We normally do the Pledge of Allegiance as one of the first items on the agenda. However, based on the, the nature of the telepresence, we are going to omit that because it, it gets a little complicated with everybody talking at once. I'll open up the floor to public comments at this time. Sue, did we receive any public comments via email or phone? There were no emails and no phone calls. I just checked emails before the meeting. Okay. I know, uh, Kelly, you're on, but uh, I'll, I'll kind of take a quick recap on a couple of things that you had called me about earlier. Uh, Kelly expressed a concern around just general line painting, especially at the Christ Lutheran Blue Spruce area of roads. Uh, we can certainly work that into next year's line painting schedule. And uh, as a follow-up to the, the road work that we're going to be having done, uh, I think we'll be uh, in such a state where enough of the roads will be paint ready where we can start breaking them into quadrants and then doing a one, one quadrant per year every year. Um, I don't want to spot stuff, which has been our, our means of doing things in the past, simply because that gets really complicated to keep track of and everything. Um, the goal, my goal at least, and everybody please feel free to speak up and, and put in a word in edgewise if you disagree, but get it to a point where we can start doing organized sections on a rotation year after year and it just becomes a habit rather than an exercise. Excellent. Okay. Uh, the other item was 422 and church uh, is very dark at, at night and it's uh, really, really hard to see. Being that's on 422, it may get complicated, but I'll, I'll do the preliminary looking into what we would have to do to ask potentially for a street light at that intersection. I know there's a whole involved process with that, but uh, based on, on visibility, and I, I understand Kelly's concern completely, um, we'll see what can be done and how hard it would be to do it. Okay. Seeing as there are no other public comments, uh, unless Dan, you're, you're also on the line, do you have any public comments? I haven't done those this morning, Peter. Okay, thank you. We'll move into the items for discussion. Item number one is the emergency declaration. Uh, we made the declaration for Marion Township back at the March Board of Supervisors meeting with a provision to extend this until a period uh, where the board declared it no longer needed. Um, I suggest that we still leave that in effect based on the general situation that still exists with COVID and the fact that the, the cases, observed cases every day are getting higher and higher rather than lower and lower. And uh, Governor Wolf, just for a side note on that, extended the emergency order another 90 days back on August 31st, which is what allows us to do these meetings via telepresence. Jim or Irene, any, any well, additional just, comments? Yes, just to add to that, uh, Conrad Weiser High School uh, just stopped their hybrid program and now they're currently only online. So we're waiting to see, I, I could tell you the cases are going up definitely. And so I think we're gonna see more and more schools going to um, uh, fully on online. So yeah, it's happening, unfortunately. Yeah, I think wow. the, the unfortunate truth of it is we're, we're mm -hmm. backsliding for a number of reasons, but there's more and more people getting sick again, which is yeah. most unfortunate. So uh, for anybody on the call, anybody that's listening to this after the fact, if it's still during COVID, uh, please take the proper precautions, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, wear masks, social distance, uh, be safe for yourself and everybody else. Absolutely. Yeah. We want to get back to being in person. But we need everyone to work together to make this happen. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a, it's a team effort. It's not something that we can individually do. Okay, next item on the agenda is the Eagle disposal bins. And I'm sure we'll have some other items for discussion around uh, Eagle. Uh, Sue, you had said that somebody from Eagle will be on the Thursday night meeting, correct? Uh, I gave him the, um, the um, how to hook up to Zoom. I thought he was gonna be on today too, but he's not, so. Okay, well, I mean, if he is, I'll, I'll see him hit the, the lobby and I'll let him in, but uh, otherwise, uh, Eagle has offered to provide us trash and recycling totes free of charge as part of our current agreement. 
This will enable them to use the arms on the truck to pick up the trash and recycling rather than having somebody get in and out and actually lift the bins. Uh, however, they potentially would, or actually wouldn't potentially, they would definitely not retain with us if we ever switched services and we would have to worry about there being a, a price increase whenever the contract were to renew beyond the, the current agreement. Um, under the current agreement, we have, uh, it was a three year with the option to extend twice additionally, mm -hmm. two years after that for a total of five. Um, we have a, a, bit of, a bit of space on that because I think we're, we're now just through year two on the Eagle agreement? Yeah, it was started, the contract started April of 2019. Okay. So yeah, we're basically like a, a year and a half-ish. Mm -hmm. um, so we still have a lot of time left on that contract, but my concern is, let me actually preface that. I think the, the totes are a good idea. They certainly make things easier and better all around. However, my concern is that it creates a barrier for exit whenever we go to do contract renewal. Um, I'd also hate to have people get rid of their current bins, switch over to the Eagle bins, only to have us switch trash providers and then say, hey, we're not getting bins from the new company. Everybody needs to go out and buy new trash bins again. Um, as I'm sure all of you guys are aware, a couple of years will go by in the blink of an eye. So uh, we have a, an opportunity here where we could potentially make things better, but we also don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot while trying to do it. Um, Jim, Irene, what are, what are your thoughts around the provided trash cans? Uh, I'm, I agree with you. Who was the provider before? Jeez, that was... Um, our prior uh, contract was, was with was Republic, and they, they did not provide uh, cans. Yeah, and I've been in places where they did provide cans. You were allowed to have your own cans. Um, and then uh, once they took their cans and the contract switched, people were annoyed because then they had to go out. It, it's that whole argument. So... Yeah. I mean, I personally would rather have my own can this way I maintenance it and take care of it the way I like, you know, but because contracts do change. Yeah, it's it's certainly a nice offer. Don't want to underscore the, the I guess, yeah. the, the benefit and the generosity there, but for what it's worth, I, I agree. Um, the vast majority of people do have cans. Like I have one of the big 95 gallon, like wheeled tote things. Um, I don't know if they are able to use that with that one or not. I'm not sure. I'm not going to speculate, but a number of people have pre-existing equipment. And then coupled with the fact that we have to worry about in a couple of years, having to go through this argument again. And I know from the last time we did this, the addition of the, 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 the totes under normal circumstances was a substantial increase in price. So the, the general vibe that I'm getting from everybody else is that we should probably politely decline the offer um, simply because we we don't want to necessarily have a, a lock-in situation or a general frustration and, and uh, discontent from the citizenry. Aren't the toast rather large too? I know we had discussed this last meeting since some people just can't physically, if they're loaded up, they can't mm -hmm. get to the curb. Yeah. And not to mention there's like, I'll, I'll use Main Street as an example where a lot of places you may not have space for two of those 95 gallon totes or it may be a huge imposition to have them carted from the front of the property or back and forth from the front to the back of the property and vice versa. Um, personally, I like, the little, I like the little bins, the recycling bins like we used to have. I'm a, a much bigger fan of those for the recycling. Most people barring weird situations like I, I know I usually have a lot of recycling but most other people you could have one or two of those bins and it wouldn't be an issue you wouldn't have it an, an overabundance of volume there um Jim you, you might want to drive you might want to drive through uh Stonecroft on Tuesday night and Wednesday morning we have the bins here and of course everybody in here is pretty old and they handle the bins fine because they're on they're on wheels yeah um and it is a, it's a nice convenience and it is a convenience for them too, because it has a little bar on the side that they grab and it just lifts that, that bucket up and dumps it. So it's a tremendous convenience for them as well. And when I lived in uh, Leesport, we changed one time and they just basically took the bins when they took the garbage that week. And then the new company came in with new bins. So it wasn't a tremendous problem. Well, my, my concern is, but for cost reasons, that if when the contract renews, we don't go to a, a service that has the bins, 
right. the and I'll assume whether it's me or you, can we dig up the the RFPs that we got and give them to Jim and I range just so that they have a kind of a better bead on on the cost difference? Yeah, it I, was, think I, I think I have them saved. It, it was substantial, which is why we opted not to to include that when we actually put it out mm -hmm. to bid. But uh, I don't I don't disagree with you for a moment. The the convenience aspect and the uniformity is delightful. My concern though is that we we may go into this with the best intentions and with Eagle's best intentions, only to have us go well. We simply can't afford to do that. We're going to go back to the the old way of doing it, and now nobody has their old trash cans, and everybody has to go buy one. True. Yeah. I'm just thinking. Uh, you know, we may not have as many complaints if they were easy easier for them to deal with because uh, these complaints lately are yeah that's crazy. the that was the taking, other thing taking <laughs> the garbage can taking the whole garbage can is a little overboard <laughs> yeah yeah i was actually going to touch on that next once we we crested the the bin discussion was we've been getting an uptick of complaints with eagle just general uh, i'll say hygiene of the of the the disposal service as well as uh, one unfortunate soul they keep throwing away his trash can for some reason. So that's something that we're going to have to, and we are currently in contact with Eagle, but continue to be in contact with them about and try to address um, simply because one, they shouldn't be doing that anyway. And, and, and two, um, we are the paying customer. We have a, a contractual service that they're marginally delivering on. Um, they should be held to the, the same standards that you'd have for any other vendor in terms of delivery of service. And if they're under delivering, then we need to, we need to hold them to it. So, uh, Sue, I would say let's leave the bins on the agenda for, for Thursday night. We'll make a, uh, an actual decision at that point. Uh, okay. Irene, Jim, my ask to you is really strongly consider this. Let's go into the, the meeting with the assumption that we are going to make a decision one way or the other on I'll Thursday have, night. I'll ask a couple of the neighbors. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I know, like, if people, if we say we're going to give you a bin, mm -hmm. people aren't going to turn down free stuff. Mm -hmm. Whether that means they get rid of their old trash cans or they put it somewhere else, I don't know. I, I'm not, again, not going to speculate. But it's the cost, which the cost going to be down the road. Exactly. It, but, but I'm trying to go into this with the, the worst case assumption where a lot of people do get rid of their trash cans because they don't need it anymore. Or they have ones that are older and they're just like, okay, whatever, I'm done with it. What happens to those folks when we go to renew if we don't get the totes again? That's that's my my long term concern. So um, won't belabor that too much more. Peter, yes. May I make a comment? Absolutely. Okay. A couple of things to think about. Over the cold winter months, you have trash collectors with people on the back of their transport truck. Mm -hmm. With the type in that Eagle is proposing the arm comes out from the truck, picks the bin up, dumps it into the trash hauler, and puts it back down on the ground. Now, in flare, fair climate weather, that's good. But when you have snow on the ground, and the snow plows come through, and you now have a big mound of snow along all your curbing and in between your cars, now it becomes difficult to get those bins out to the curb. Yep, that's actually a very, very valid point. And to that, if you actually manage to get it to the curb, that thing picks it up and goes to put it back down, there's a very good likelihood that it's not going to put it down exactly the same way that it picked it up. True. That arm extends out very far. We have this service in New Jersey, and the truck basically kind of came down almost in the middle of the street, and it could reach out as far as six feet pick that bin up, bring it in, dump it up, put it back down, and push it back into where it came from. Mm -hmm. It will put it right back where it came from. But getting them over the mounds of snow and dust up over the winter was very difficult. You actually yeah. had to clean a spot now to put your trash can. Okay. Absolutely. Certainly worth considering. Okay. Thank you. Th thank you. Okay. Uh, Sue, Jim, Irene, anything else on Eagle before we move on? No, oh, thank you. Okay. Next up is the website. Uh, we have been continuing to submit content to Civic CMS. 
uh, we were originally going to do a training exercise the, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, for what it's worth, I apologize. It was a, a hardship on my part. I wasn't able to coordinate that based on my work schedule, but I am hoping to get something this upcoming week. If not uh, at latest, uh, the beginning of the following week. I want to be sensitive to Thanksgiving and anybody's vacation that they may have, but um, trying to, to work that in as most of my, my daytime hours as well as a lot, a lot of my evening hours have been monopolized by my day job. So it's still progressing. We are still getting content. The site is largely built from a framework standpoint. We just have to, to get familiar with it ourselves and get it kind of pushed from development into production. So the we're on the, we're on the home stretch for that. We just got to, got to, do the last little bit to get it to, to completion. Uh, Jim, Sue, Irene, I'll be in contact with you to see what dates and times work best. Uh, do you have any follow-up questions, comments, or concerns? Because I know we've been steadily providing stuff, tidbits here and there, things that we have uploaded or, or digital copies of for documents to C uh, Civic CMS. And uh, I know we're going to have to do some, some additional creation around things. Like Irene, I had talked to you about like the meet the supervisor page or like the, the stuff around like the fire department or like the emergency management stuff, things like that, things to populate uh, certain other areas of the, the, the website that aren't hard record like ordinances and everything else. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for uh, taking control of that. Okay, next up is the road project 2020. Uh, the, the last thing that we have to do We've, we've already got most of it in place. It's ready to go with the exception of we want to add in uh, some more detail around some sections that need remedial work prior to having the oil and chip and everything else done to them. Uh, I've not had a chance to go out and, and remeasure, but uh, possibly this weekend, weather and schedule permitting, I'll go out and get a, a rough estimate of yardage for those areas that we want to have remediated so that we can snap that in there and get that advertised, uh, the intent being before the end of the year. Uh, a lot of uh, companies are, they're, they're hungriest, if you will, at the end of the year before they go into the actual road work season. So if we get it posted early, we're gonna have a, a good, uh, hopefully a good selection of people interested as well as a, a good competitive set of prices that we receive. So once we have that done, the next thing that we're gonna wanna do in the early part of 2021 is to start IDing the road work that we want to do in 2021, since we will have the, the funding, the, the regular annual funding that we have in place around the road work to keep that, that marching along. Um, I haven't had a chance to check with Jim McCarthy, but on the, the subject of road work, I want to see if uh, they have any ETA for the dirt and low volume gravel road grants as we did put in for one of them. Um, I believe, and keep me honest here, Sue, I think it's the 18th of next month is the 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 dirt and low volume gravel road seminar. I thought it was the 8th and 9th. 8th and 9th. Uh, you're probably right. I'm probably throwing a one in the front of there. Either way, um, I'm going to try to take off of work. It's going to be questionable. Um, but um, if, we, uh, if we can, the ideal would be to have the three of us have that certification. That way, for any reason, whether somebody rotates off the board or, or something happens, that we're, we're not a single point of failure. Uh, right now, we don't really have anybody, but uh, there are some ways around that in terms of if we put somebody from like Tolpa Hocken under their, their agreement, if we have them signed on to the road crew, even just in name only, they would be allowed to endorse it. So there's, there's ways around it, but the ideal would be to have us specifically be able to do that. Um, I don't know if, and I got to look, the, the the prospect of potentially having somebody from the road crew get that certification as well. I don't think it has to be a supervisor or anybody in an appointed position in that no, capacity. I, I, Jim had told me that I could do it if I wanted to. Yeah, so anyway. like it, it, it might be worthwhile to, to extend the offer to like Butch and Leon, Kevin, and other people just, again, to, to cover bases. Um, so Jim and Irene, if you're not opposed to that, I'll bring that up with them today when I see them and see if they would be interested in going to that. And if they have availability to do that, because just frankly speaking, the more people that we have that, the, the more likely we are to be able to endorse those, those grant projects when they become available. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm okay. Yeah. I'll see if I'm, if I'm not working, I'll be able to go, okay. but that's kind of tough for me getting off two days in a row during the weekday. 
to say it's tough for me to get an hour <laughs> off during a weekday, um, but I'm I'm still gonna take a look and see if I can do it. But I figure if we 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 cover all avenues one way or the other, we're we're gonna we're gonna get a win at some point. Okay. If we don't have anything additional there, the next item on the agenda is the RKL contract for auditing. The current contract expires the 31st of this year. Uh, we did receive proposals from RKL and Aikens. Um, Irene, do you wanna cover yeah. that briefly? Actually, I reached out to uh, uh, Aikens Accounting. I, I was working with uh, Sidney Meller and she wasn't available at the moment. Actually, the owner gave me a call and for the most part, the services offered by Aikens is just spot verbatim what RKL is offering us. And if we contract for a three year term, then the increase will be no more than 3% annually. So again, significant savings there. And I could say I did work with Aikens previously, a very nice group. And I, uh, I mentioned, I said, hey, you know, I'm kind of a newbie with all the functions on QuickBooks. And she said, not a problem. So hopefully we have everything in order. I, I can't see any issues with a new firm. So I'm willing to take a leap of faith and work with someone else, especially when it's such a significant savings. Yeah. RKL has been, has been good to us, but yeah. the, the cost difference is pretty substantive. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, uh, I don't know if you guys got a chance to look at the, the budget since I sent it out uh, yesterday, but uh, I did change the, the proposed budget item to the, the rate that uh, Aikens put for auditing. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be one of the things that we're going to need to do at the, I mean, it's a professional service. We could technically could do it at any time, but I would say that's probably going to be best served for the reorg mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. um, Sue, do you agree? Uh, well, you can make a motion to appoint Aikens um, really as the auditor in 2021, but then at reorg you still have to appoint them. Yeah. But you can always make a motion to, you know, just make it specific, like, you know, we'll appoint them in 2021. Okay. Okay, so then let's let's potentially do that, like, at the December meeting, I'm thinking, because the, the December meeting is the, the 19th. We move, oh no, it's the 31st. It is the yeah, 30th, excuse me, it's the 30th. 30th. Yeah, we, we, yeah. Moved, we moved it out rather than moving it back. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you could, you could even do it at Thursday night's meeting if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, I think just for the, the purposes, because we want to have them set up. And, and I ready. say that because December's agenda is going to be full. It's going to, yeah, it's going to, there's going to be a lot of stuff in December, and we want to give them time to get whatever they need ready to start 21, 2021 out. So I would say let's let's discuss this further and make the motion at Thursday night, but I'm I'm personally on board with switching to Aikens simply because of the, the services being directly comparable and it being a, a pretty hefty difference in price. Okay, next up on the agenda is the Western Berks Planning Commission. Uh, the next meeting is November 17th at 7 p.m. at the Robazonia Borough Hall. Uh, I was at the last meeting on the 15th. There was a, a couple of questions or concerns raised about a few items which we talked about at last month's Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, I think uh, some of it was a, a potential mis misunderstanding from the, the Planning Commission's part around certain zoning districts. Um, and uh, some questions about just total lot size and, and how we're handling uh, variances and things like that. I, I sent an email to the the secretary and all the the, the board members of the planning commission there uh, stating that uh, we reviewed it, we talked it over with the engineer and we still agree with everything that's been outlined in the plan. We would like to move forward as is. Um, Irene and Jim, if you're available that evening on the 17th, it would be good for, I think everybody to, to be there as we kind of get this over the finish line. The next step after that is that it would be advertised and then it has to be uh, voted on and adopted by the, the joint planning commission, which uh, from the way I understand it, we would all be present. They would have essentially everybody there from the board meetings or the, the respective board meetings uh, enough for a quorum to be able to, to ratify it. Um, I'd have to inquire more as to where that specifically would be and how they're doing that just by the volume of people. But 
it's uh, it's usually, or they try to do it all at once because they only have to advertise the one meeting for that as the the thing for it. So it wouldn't be like, okay, we're going to have it this night. We have to advertise for Marion. We have to advertise for, for North Heidelberg. We have to advertise for everybody else individually. They just do it all at once. So once we know date and location, I'll certainly let you guys know and we'll be sure to, to share in whatever capacity is possible with everybody else. Uh, that way, if somebody's interested, they can go. But uh, overall, the, the joint zoning is going to bring us uh, into a much better space of compliance and, and reality for what the, the township actually is being used for right now. And the, the addition into the joint zoning gives us a lot of utility around making sure that we, we don't have what are usually referred to as, as nuisance things. We have a better control over being able to put them certain places, even outside of our own township. So, uh, any questions, comments, or concerns from anyone? Jim, Sue, Irene? No, thank you very much. I should okay. be, I'll be there. Okay, fantastic. Okay, next item on the agenda is the old furnace. Uh, I called several HVAC companies. Uh, so far, only Essig has come out and taken a look and provided a quote. Um, a couple of other places either did not return my calls or declined the business because they were either too busy or they didn't want to come this far in, out of their, their normal service area. I am still waiting for a call back from one of the local companies, Carl Keith. Uh, They're supposed to call me yesterday, but they didn't, but that could have just been them being busy. So I'll follow up with them next week and see about them coming out. Uh, the one nice thing that uh, Essig did while they were there is they, uh, they didn't completely disconnect power, but they did terminate so that it, it is not powered on anymore in any capacity. The water is not actively flowing to the unit. Uh, so Sue, you shouldn't hear any strange bumps or, or noises uh, anymore, which was was very nice of them to do. But the the service for them to come in would be to actually disconnect things, um, disconnect it from power, pull the power lines back to junction boxes, uh, cap the the water connections going to the the system, cap the oil connections coming in from the tank. Uh, so that we could actually go through the process of removing the unit safely without having to worry about either a contamination situation from heating oil spilling in or uh, from flooding the basement because we've ruptured a water line that was pressurized. So um, did the, uh, and I, I apologize, I can flip through it, but uh, you may know off the top of your head, did the quote get in the, the, the packet for today, Sue? Yes. Okay. So in the workshop items packet, there is the quote, and I want to say it was about 550 bucks to do that. 596. 596, thank you, Sue. Um, which, it's money, but it's not outlandish for what we're, what we're asking you to do from a professional service. So hopefully we'll have a, a second quote in hand by Thursday. Um, but it, it's low enough that if we don't have any, any returned interest from any other companies, that it would be worthwhile, I think, to, to move on this and just get it done. Um, so hopefully more details Thursday night, but uh, for everybody's consideration. And that's uh, page 27 of the packet. Okay, next up is the garage lights. Uh, the road crew is going to be going over to the municipal building today at around noon to do some garage cleanup. One of the things that I'm gonna be trying to do interspersed with everything else that we're doing is to hang some more of the garage lights. Um, especially if I have some people there helping, it should hopefully go relatively smoothly. It's just gonna be measuring and mounting things and then hanging them. Um, hopefully get that done. Uh, for anybody, uh, Jim, you're welcome to, to come to if you have availability. And Irene, I think you had said that you, yeah. you, you had a conflict. Yeah, I have to go to work. Ah, that, that sucks, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll hopefully get some, some good progress on cleaning some stuff out, organizing some stuff. I truthfully don't expect to get everything done today simply because but I don't want to be there for an extended period of time. We could be well, there for if days. I, if I was off, we would get everything done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll have to we'll have to take a, a, a rain check on, on another another day because I think it's it's certainly gonna warrant it. But uh, yeah. we'll get as much as we can done. And one of the other things that uh, we're gonna try to do is get the, the trucks ready, take stock of the trucks in in advance of winter in case we do get snow for how are the chains doing do the trucks need any oil changes? Do we have spare wiper blades? Do we have washer fluid? Do we have to do anything with the lights? Is there any remedial work that we have to do to make sure that they're ready to go for this winter? Um, so 
I don't think we have really a lot of questions, comments, or concerns there, but uh, Sue, Jim, or Irene, is there anything that you'd like to, to add on to that or bring to my attention for things that we should pay special attention to today? Um, which was concerned about uh, certain items in the garage, not knowing what they are. And so um, I guess we'll have to call Elk Environmental to properly remove and dispose of those items. So as long as if, if, you if you're going across things, tag it and I can call them up this week. I should have time to get into the office during the day. So I call them up and ask them to come out and take a look. I know it's expensive, but it's something we need to do safely. It it's it's yeah. been needed for a very long time there's yeah. unless i'm misreading the situation i think there's a barrel of stuff in there that was probably there like sue you had said your dad was probably well, present sure for that barrel those, i'm sure most of those barrels my dad had gotten when he was supervisor and he um i think his last term ended in like 90 something <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's it's been he sitting. Did, he did all the maintenance on the trucks. He did maintenance on the building. He did. I mean, he did everything. Um, yeah. And you know, supervisors since then haven't done everything. So it's just stuff is there. Um, yeah. um, and just for the record, um, last year I had called Jane Meeks, who is the director of the Berks County Solid Waste Authority about recycling or getting rid of those chemicals and she said the county does not handle that um i said who do we call and she said the closest one that she knows of is elk environmental um it's, it won't be cheap it's going to be pricey yeah but they will take them away so yeah um i mean if you know if anybody knows of any other companies that do that um it'll be worth a phone call absolutely um, yeah but, absolutely yeah. Bottom line, though, is to her knowledge, her knowledge that was the only company kind of localish that yeah. did stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, we'll certainly do some research. But the bottom line is, it's a it's a can that's been kicked for mm -hmm. decades, and mm -hmm. we we need to do something with it. Mm -hmm. If I could um, ask, though, if you um, if you have the opportunity to inventory, I don't care. Like, I'd like to know how many cans of spray paint, blue spray paint, black spray paint, high, you that's... know, highlighter color. If you could inventory, uh, Dan and I can work on doing an Excel sheet so that we could keep track of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and if you get a reasonable idea of how much and how large of shelving, again, I could do the shopping and we could get that stuff and get it organized in this way. There's not a visibility issue, and we know what we have, and we're not buying stuff that we already have. No, absolutely. The game plan is anything that we take out, we, we inventory. So, mm -hmm. like, even minimal things like wrenches. How many wrenches do we have so we know what we have for yeah. tools, materials, chemicals, all that stuff. Coming so, up with a food plan where things are visible and easy to access because it looks quite hazardous in there. Yeah, long and I think to keep to keep a path clear to get into that furnace room. Mm -hmm. I mean, the furnaces are new, but you know things can still go wrong. Um, yes. Yeah. Because, well, I mean, uh, it, you know, a few weeks ago, you couldn't even get you couldn't even get there. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. it's a fire safety thing above right. all else. But right. um, yeah. we need to we need to do a lot of straightening, and I'd like to see us get to a point. And I'll actually I'll I'll re revisit this point at a slightly later point in the agenda today but i'd like to get us to where we're a little more sophisticated if we're we're doing work on the things which i think we should be doing uh having more of a, a slightly professional mechanics setup where we have like a pegboard where the tools go and they're clearly marked that these things are supposed to be here um one because that way if we know it goes missing it's it's pretty plain um but then we also know where everything is at any time, whether it's me going into the garage or Leon or Irene or, or even you, Sue, because you go, oh man, I need a hammer for something. Yeah, or a screwdriver. Um, or a screwdriver, yeah, <laughs> something simple that it's it's not like you have to hunt around and dig through piles of things. So, um, Peter, yeah. yes, sir. Even even if you don't take the time to do the inventory today, if you just take the time to gather all like items into one place mm -hmm. instead of having blue spray paint in this corner and blue spray, blue spray paint in another corner. I'll be able to go into the garage and then take the, do the inventory. Okay. Uh, my, my plan, and I'm, I'm certainly on board with that. It's a, a slightly different way of doing it, but I was going to, as we take things out, go, okay, blue spray paint. 
Okay. Blue, green spray paint and then catalog, but so um, I think I'm, Irene would like you to accomplish a lot more. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think you're right. Taking the time. I'm sorry, I'm working. Otherwise, I'd be there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to be there either. Oh, no, it's okay. No, it, it's okay. I completely understand the 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 unique constraints and conflicts of schedules believe me you're you're you're, you're preaching to the converted there yeah. um but uh, i want to make sure that above all else that it's a safe space for everybody that has to go in and out of there and that the like the trucks and stuff are ready long term there's a lot of things that we're going to work towards honestly if i can be entirely transparent into 2021 there may be things that that change and alter how we go about approaching this but the the end state that we want to be at is I'll say industry standard, even though we're, we're not a, a private business, but have the proper safety in place where any of the chemicals that we have are clearly cataloged or stored properly. If it's something that has to be in a fireproof cabinet, uh, that we have MSDS sheets, yep. all of our tools are in good repair, are cataloged. And for example, things with serial numbers that we have that recorded in case of theft or, or damage or loss. Mm -hmm. um, really getting into a much more mature space rather than, and, and this is not a disparagement for anybody currently working on things or have previously worked on things in the past, but we're, we're very much operating like a mom and pop rather than a, a well-oiled machine like we should. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal here is to try to get us in alignment with that and ha have it be sustainable so that whether I'm off the board at some point or Sue's not the secretary or whatever the underlying change in staff is that whoever else is able to pick it up and continue doing those exact same steps easily, consistently and reliably. Um, just another, as an aside, if he finds anything that's nostalgic, I know there's a lot of baseballs in the window, set it aside, we do something creative and have it hung up around in the office in the hallways so that, you know, it's a kind of um, a, a nod to the prior people that were there. So I'd like to preserve a part of the history, but if you find stuff like that, please set it aside. Will do. Yeah. Um, from what I understand from Sue, that tennis racket that's in the window isn't anything special. That just kind of no, showed up. I don't think so. I don't think the baseballs all either are either. They're probably even playground. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it'd be kind of cool. I could do something with that and make it look nice. Maybe you find like a old uh, manual for a tool that's non-existent. If it looks cool, you know, set it aside. If you're like, hey, this would be kind of cool. Just set it aside. I could do something with it. Much like the the office paperwork. For, for me, I'll make a, an Irene pile in the garage. <laughs> so I enjoy that. <laughs> You've got I mean, two that, boxes to look through. <laughs> oh boy, that tennis racket's not John McEnroe's. That's a that's a rip. Well, there's no, I there's don't, I don't think so. <laughs> there's the building funding if it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up on the agenda is we will need to set the date and time for the reorganiza uh, reorganization meetings for the board of supervisors. Uh, this needs to be set for January 4th, 2021, which is the first Monday in January, and we have to advertise it. Um, we could wait until Thursday night, but honestly, I kind of consider this a, a housekeeping item that we can set the date and the time and just let everybody be aware of it November at the meeting and then at the subsequent December meetings, give a reminder. Um, if there's no objections to it, I will make a motion to set the date and time for the 2021 reorganizational meeting for Board of Supervisors to be January 4th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is the date and time for the reorganization meeting for auditors. This has to be set for January 5th, which is the day after the Board of Supervisors reorganization meeting, and we must advertise it as well. Um, Sue, uh, short-term memory here. Did I, did I ha include the advertising it in that motion? I don't know. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, just in case, I would like to ensure that it also includes the advertisement in that motion um for the purposes of record keeping uh quick roll call jim do you agree yes i uh irene do you agree yes okay so for the purposes of the auditor meeting i'll make a motion to set that for january 5th 2021 at 7 p.m 
and to and and to advertise it accordingly. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, I have a question. I, I think I actually have the same question. <laughs> um, I Are they going to be on Zoom or is it going to be in person? Yes. So that was my question because I know we're going to do ours on Zoom because I have to. COVID I should put that in the advertisement. Yes, and that was that was going to be my follow up with you and why I said accordingly rather than spelling it out. Okay. Um, my personal preference and suggestion would be to do both through telepresence, but I know. There may be some um, people that would would have difficulty with that who are who are auditors. Uh, yeah, I can probably tell you one that doesn't have a computer. If he yeah. does, I don't know that he knows how to do Zoom. Yeah, my concern is from a safety standpoint getting people into the building. I don't well, now, think. Take, keep in mind, there's three auditors. Mm -hmm. Generally, no one shows up to those. They yeah, that... except me because I'm opening the building and closing the building. Yeah, um, the, the concern though is you could have people show up. We don't we don't have a track record of that, but if we have you and the three auditors in the building, I, mean, I don't I I don't sit in the room with them. I stay in the office. Yeah. Um. But but I don't go home because you know unlocking the building, I just stay there until the meeting's over. Yeah. And then close everything up. Um, Zoom can be reached via phone if they have a smartphone. Correct. You can actually you can do audio. You don't have to be right. You don't have to do video. You could dial in from a, any telephone. So we could certainly propose that. We've got the, the right. they understand that they can do that. So it doesn't because I still have a landline. As long as they understand, they could do it from a landline. Yeah, you can do it from a cell phone too. Yeah, like it's just it's no different than placing any other phone call. Um, what we could do would be we could do a hybrid of it that we I can open up the Zoom. We can connect it in at the township building and let it let it go. Anybody that, that wants to show up from the auditors or, or people in the community, they could do it. They just have to observe proper, proper social distancing. Um, the other added constraint that we have to do on that is if we do have people in that room, we then have to sanitize it. So. Well, uh, I mean, on, on that note, after a planning commission meeting, I, well, I mean, I don't have a sprayer Mm -hmm. But I wipe everything down. Yeah, which which is fine. That's good. That's mm -hmm. the a, an appropriate way of doing that. Um, I just want to throw that out there: is if we have people in the building, we have to do that. Mm -hmm. Like it's no ifs, ands, or buts. It has to get done. Um, so we've still got time. We don't necessarily have to advertise it like immediately. We we can still discuss this at the Thursday meeting. I think mm -hmm. technically we'd be able to. I don't know. It would probably be too short notice for the the December workshop. Yeah, be, that. yeah, it's um, it's too short. Yeah. So let's. I would say this week, let's try and reach out to the auditors and find out what they would. I'm sure their preference is going to be to come in the building, but mm -hmm. see if there would be any opposition to doing it via phone or through a, a an interactive like a telepresence like this, because um, it could be a situation where whatever paperwork they need to have, we either email it to them ahead of time or in the case of somebody not having a computer that we actually physically mail them something and say, dial in, follow along. Because um, I'm, I'm going to make a, a broad stroke assumption. Well, that well, I always mail them a letter that, um, and then I provide a, um, the night of the audit, I give them a, I don't know what you want to call it, like a checklist. Um, you know, they have to, um, if you appoint supervisors as, road crew, the auditors decide how much they're getting paid. I mean, you make a recommendation and then the auditors decide how much they're getting paid. Yeah. Uh, you as a supervisor out on road crew. Yeah. So I have kind of like a checklist for them that night. Um, I mean, I think about the other thing. Yeah, when, you know, planning commission meets, there's five planning commission plus an engineer plus me. That's seven mm -hmm. people just on the board. Yeah. Um, plus, you know, whoever we're, whatever project is discussed, usually there's two people showing up, a person and an engineer, um, you know, so it's nine people in a room. Mm. Um, I mean, just, just throw that out there to you. Oh yeah. No, no, no. My, my immediate concern isn't necessarily capacity for the, the auditor thing, because I know, like you had said in the past, we don't have anybody show up mm -hmm. to those, mm -hmm. but the concern is mostly around like the building's technically closed right now. And if we open it and have people in, then we have to clean it. Mm -hmm. 
So for our meeting, our meeting's kind of a gimme. We're in the, the habit of doing these via telepresence with, I would say, a, a pretty high degree of proficiency at this point. The, the real kind of wild card is the, the guys, uh, I should say, the, the folks that are the auditors, if they're going to be capable of, of doing it telepresence. Um, so I would say let's touch base with them this week and make a, a more definitive decision on Thursday night so that we can move forward with advertising that. Um, although we are, we have already advertised or we are, have already authorized it to be advertised. So we don't have to take any additional actions or motions there. We no, can potentially, I just, need, I just need to know whether it's in person or not or yeah. how I'm going to advertise that. Yeah. But I, mean, I mean, you can't say it's possibly going to be one or the other. You have no, to no. say need, what it's going to be. Need to be definitive. But my, my point was we don't have to necessarily wait for a meeting. We could do that out of cycle as long as it's, Right, because you're ready to motion upon. to advertise. Correct, them. correct. And I don't think there's a, other than us saying, like, we really would prefer to, to not have people in the building. There's really not much of a decision-making factor from us. It's going to be, okay, how do we, how do we make sure that the, the meeting happens? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, well, then the other thing is, keep in mind, we're not having board super in-person meetings because mm -hmm. we get a, we get an average of 10 people at public people showing up in a meeting. I mean, yeah. you know, at an auditor's meeting, I don't think there's ever been, since, since I'm working for the township in four years, I don't think anybody's from the public has shown up. Okay. Um, so Jim, Irene, what are your, what are your thoughts on us doing our, our usual Zoom thing for that and then having the reorg for the auditors be in person for them? And then we just have to go in and Clorox wipe the room. I mean, between now and then, if we could encourage them to do it via phone, even if they need to, I'd, I'd much prefer that because it's an unfair burden on Sue for having to go in there and, and clean up. So, yeah, I mean, I can. Well, I mean, I, keep in mind, I'm a little bit of a germaphobe. So, I, I mean, after, if someone, if I let somebody in the door to the building, after they leave, I wipe the handles on the doorknobs and the, I mean, I wipe. Thing. I wipe the pens, I wipe anything they touch, because I'm a right. little bit, bit of a germaphobe anyway, so. Yeah, um, but if we can, uh, if we could reach out to them and ask them if uh, they're capable of either meeting via Zoom or by phone, I think I would much prefer that, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, the other, like I said, the other thing we can do is kind of a hybrid setup that yeah. we, we throw it out to them. I'll, I'll plan on potentially going in with Sue that evening. And I'll set up the laptop, get it connected into the Zoom session. If anybody does dial in or if all three dial in, then nobody shows up in the building. We have nothing to worry about. Um, otherwise, if all three show up in the building, we just have the, the Zoom session and it's a recorded meeting. So. That'll work. Yeah. Okay. Next up on the agenda, we have a, a number of terms that are expiring in January 2021. Uh, the first one is for the Planning Commission. It's Ryan Allgaier. Next one is for Planning Commission, which is Franklin Troutman. Next is the Zoning Hearing, which is Charles Zeckman Jr. Another one for Zoning Hearing, which is David Sadison. Vacancy Board Chairman for Nancy Carrington. And then the Emergency Management Coordinator, John Seleski. Uh, just about everybody has been on, with the exception of John, since John's the, the newcomer on the emergency management position. Uh, everybody else has been in that position previously. Uh, if anybody is interested, please okay, let us... No normally, I reach out to everyone where they're, when their term is up, mm -hmm. asking them if they want to serve another term. Mm -hmm. um, I did that. Um, so far, the only person that said no was Charlie. Okay. Um, and I have an email to Andy... Um, to find out whether John's appointment is, if, if he has a term or just an appointment. Um, okay. Because I, cause we didn't have an EMC for so long that I don't know. Um, I think it's just appointed, but I wanted to make sure. Yeah, it's always good to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's an, just an annual thing. It it's not like you appoint for two years or three years right. or whatever. Um, Interestingly, with Charles Zeckman, uh, if he said no, we need to find somebody for zoning hearing. And right. my recollection of second class township code, none of the supervisors are able no. to sit in that position. So no. we would have to find somebody from the community who would that, be interested That is in that. an actual hearing. There's a court reporter. There's mm -hmm. an attorney. Um, that he's, I mean, the court reporter swears people in. It mm -hmm. is an actual hearing. Yeah. 
So the supervisors can't sit on that board. Yeah. So we need to find somebody to, to fill that vacancy. Uh, what I had started saying is for, especially for that position or really any of the other ones, if anybody is interested in this or any of these, please let us know as we will always take the time to review interested parties and take them into consideration. Um, and zoning hearing board just is on an as needed basis as uh, people apply for variances or whatever. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's as needed. There's no set monthly meeting for that. And it could be any day, any time kind of thing. <laughs> In general, how does the public learn about these type of positions? I mean, aside that, from attending hearings like, oh, excuse me, uh, meetings like this, is there any other so, format? That so the, the meetings are advertised. The hearing is actually advertised. Well, I think, um, Sue, I think she means the positions. Right? Oh, um, I guess by the Zoom meeting. <laughs> yeah, and say so we can put something on the bulletin board as well. Um, once the website's up, that's something we can put on the, the, the message board on the main page as well, things that are for consideration or, or public interest. Um, but short of doing something like sending out a mailer, there's really not not a great way to, to advert, yeah, as I say, to, to contact or advertise other than, than word of mouth. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, my ask, I guess, would be Dan, Jim, see if there's any in interest from Stonecroft, Kelly, if you know of anybody that would be interested in, in any one of these positions, whether it's um, planning commission, zoning hearing, um, et cetera, if, as much as possible, spread the word. I'll, I'll talk to neighbors here too. Um, Sue, likewise, if you know of anybody, I'll ask the road crew to, to ask for inquiry as well. But um, the you number know, just of- as a, a kind of aside, um, you, you should know something about our zoning too, not yeah. just, um, you know, this isn't just a, let's give a, give your neighbor a, um, yeah. oh, do what absolutely. he wants, you, absolutely. Know, you should know something about our zoning. Yeah, or, or have a very strong interest in coming up to speed on it very quickly. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. not a, it's not a, a show appointment. It actually, it, there's, there's work that, that, that comes along with this. Uh, and I know a number of people have been on, on those, those positions, especially like Franklin. Franklin, I think has been on planning commission for a, a number of, number of years now, mm -hmm. um, where there is a certain entrenched knowledge, but I don't want to, I don't want to see us potentially lock in just because of, uh, kind of the status quo if there's somebody who who may have a, a unique and keen interest to it and has a the appropriate skill set and drive to do it as well so if there's if there's options we should always consider them mm -hmm. but do uh, we know do we know how many open positions there are at this point there are just six. one on, well there's one open position on zoning hearing that's it yeah okay you know, there's six total things that are, are going to be renewing this year, but there's one position that we know is absolutely open. Okay. You wouldn't be interested in that, would you, Dan? <laughs> you're on. You're on mute again. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I put it on mute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm supposed to be for Stonecrop Village, so it might be interesting enough to do it for the township as well. Well, if you've got an interest, let us know. Or likewise, okay. if you know of anybody. But uh, I was mostly saying that in jest because I <laughs> had the opportunity to, to give you a little poke there. Um, yeah. Okay. We don't have anything further on the terms. We'll move on to the next item. Jim, Sue, Irene, any qualms? Okay. Mm -hmm. Next is the County of Berks Municipal Tax Sheet. We share the printing and postage costs with the county for the tax bills. The Municipal Tax Sheet and contact information needs to be completed and sent back by December 31st. Um, uh, I don't think we'll have any issues with that. Uh, the goal here is we're gonna discuss the budget on the last half of the meeting or the last portion of the meeting. Um, if there's any things that we have to add or alter or change, we can do so and then rediscuss it Thursday night with the intent of uh, approving the budget so that it can be advertised and then accepted at either the, the workshop meeting for the, the sake of timing uh, or if we're getting really down to the wire at the, the Board of Supervisors meeting on the 30th and it would immediately well, so have to go all, in the So first of all, you accept the budget, the proposed budget. Mm -hmm. So potentially you would accept the proposed budget at Thursday night's meeting. Mm -hmm. It's advertised. You make a motion to accept it and advertise it. 
And then at the December board meeting, you adopt the budget. Yeah. So I was actually thinking about this and um, if you accept the budget and advertise it, could I still not fill out this sheet? Because you won't be changing the millage. That was that was my thought too. When from I talked November to, you the, to December's meeting. Yeah, when I talked to you in the office the other day, that was my thought is once we go to advertise it, we've essentially barring something cataclysmic that somebody brings up from the community after reviewing it. That's that's probably not going to change. And even if we do have to change an amount, we're probably not going to be changing millage or, or, or front footage costs for streetlights. Right. So it would probably be safe to have that prepped and, and ready to go. Um, I'd be hesitant to actually submit it until we actually have the, the budget adopted. But that doesn't mean we couldn't have everything filled out and, and ready to hit send. Exactly. That was my thought on yeah. that, too. Because if, if I get run over by a truck, at least somebody else can do it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, God willing, that doesn't happen. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I like, the, I like the, uh, the, the, the disaster prepping. I do. <laughs> um, okay, so I don't think we really have to do much more on that other than discuss the budget, which is a, a couple of items forward on the agenda. And, and let me just say that if we don't fill out this sheet and return this sheet, uh, everybody will get a tax bill without any amount on it. Which we, we do not want. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, next up is the winter snow removal. Uh, the, the two big questions are, are the trucks ready? And do we have a list of farmers? So uh, in response to the first question, that's going to be one of the things that we're checking today as we go through the garage cleanup. And uh, as for the list of farmers, we have the, the one from last year. And I'll, I'll make it a point of contacting uh, Mervyn Brubaker. I believe he was the, the person that we were contacting last year around coordination therein uh, to make sure that we have an updated list of farmers and that we have the appropriate plan in place for when to engage and when not to engage. Um, so I'll, I'll work on that either this week or one of the other weeks following. Uh, I'm sorry, Irene, you were saying yes, something? I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt. Can you elaborate on that? I don't know what you mean by engaging so farmers. We have uh, an agreement in place and a, and a setup of stuff where in an emergency for snow removal, we are able to essentially subcontract out to the farmers where they would assist with snow removal with some of their equipment, plows, tractors, things like that. Okay, that's in the event of a huge snowstorm where our road crew can't handle everything. Yeah. And um, Peter refreshed my memory. It had something to do with the workers yeah. So we actually, we do this a certain way so that they're technically on the workman's comp when they're, they're out plowing. We effectively pay them an hourly rate and then rent their tractor from them for uh, a, a fee. Um, but this way, if there is a work-related incident for them providing a service to the township, they are covered from a liability standpoint. Um, it's not often that we've ever had to, to engage okay. that, but it's it's very good to have in place in the event of if we did have a, a substantial blizzard and we were having problems. I know in the past, like last year, we were looking to try to get an additional plow driver and that kind of didn't find its feet. Um, if we had that level of emergency, we would be able to, to tap people that were willing in the community that have the, the skill set, the knowledge and the equipment to help offset the, the road crew and the, the trucks that we have. Okay, that makes sense. And, and I believe these farmers are kind of like spread out over the township. So they each kind of have like a little area that they do, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, in you... the event that we get this, you know, three feet of snow or whatever. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take the, the baton on that and I'll, I'll try and give Mervyn a, a call sometime over the next week or two and uh, make sure that we have well, that. Well, you know what? I'll see him at planning commission. I can oh, okay. Yeah. If you can beat, then. if you can beat me to it, that would be ideal. Yeah. I just thought of that. He'll be at planning commission so I can check with him. Okay. Yeah. That would be phenomenal. If we have, I know we have the list from last year, but if we can mm -hmm. just give him the list and say, or is this still valid? It may be a simple mm -hmm. yes, or it may be no, this person moved or no, they're not interested, or this person just had a baby and they're definitely not going to go out during a snowstorm. Yeah. That, yeah. that sort of thing. If we can close the gap there, that's just, I appreciate it because it's one less thing I have to worry about. Sure. Okay. Next up is the Act 537. Uh, I completed the draft memo and sent it over to McCarthy Engineering for their review uh, before we sent it over to DEP. Uh, the memo was uh, largely a, a revision and, and 
rehash of what we had talked about earlier in the year that we wanted to, to sit down with the DEP, mostly around our focus for affordability and need, and then uh, kind of really just a change in order of operations on how we want to approach the long-term plan for, for sewage disposal. If we need it, we'll discuss larger projects, but until then, if we don't need it, we're obviously going to continue managing on-lot through the on-lot ordinance. And if we do find that we need it, we need to talk money. And if we can't get sufficient grants, if it's not beneficial from a cost standpoint to the community, then we need to find an alternative or manage under best technical guidance as specified in the regulations. Um, so we're hoping that uh, I didn't go into to too much detail there. I tried to keep it brief, kept it to one page. Uh, the intent is to start the conversation with them and get the ball rolling on making those revisions. Um, one of the things that we seriously should consider doing for two reasons, and I'll quickly uh, summarize that, is the income study. The income study is going to help us get a better understanding uh, and footing to make that discussion with them around financial viability. They're only good for, for so long, so this is going to be an exercise in, in data collection. Uh, for this, as well as if we're going to be, and I hope we certainly are, uh, applying for grants for other things in 2021, whether it's new windows for the building or uh, things for the playground or the, doing things with, uh, like I had mentioned before, if we can find grant money to get an elevator put in so that we can start using the second floor and have it be ADA compliant. Um, a lot of those are contingent on financial need. So without an income study, you don't have valid data to use to make those grant applications. So we effectively, if we go through the exercise of doing that, could use that on a number of fronts next year. Jim, Irene, what are your thoughts? I need that income study. Yeah, that's just from everything that I've looked at for grant applications, whether it's Act 537 or like playground stuff, if we're gonna be chasing grants in, in addition to what the MTCA is doing, other building related things like windows, everything just about requires some sort of attestation to need or, or why they should be giving you the, the quote unquote free money. And the only way to do that is with an income study. So, okay. Uh, I think we're, we're all kind of in agreement on that. That's something we can talk about in the coming months and, and start the, the wheels in motion on that, but I think it's it's certainly going to be a useful thing to, to have in our arsenal for next year. Okay, final item on the agenda is the 2021 budget. Um, as we discussed a little bit earlier on in the meeting, the proposed budget must be advertised once in the newspaper for at least 20 days before its final adoption, and it has to be available for public inspection. Uh, we would need to make a motion to accept the 2021 budget and uh, advertise it uh, in the Reading Eagle uh, with the anticipated adoption uh, being at the December 2020 meeting. Um, Irene, Jim, did you get a chance to look at the, the, the email that I sent out with the link to the file on the Google Drive? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what I did, and, and thank you to Irene and Dan for exporting the, the data out of QuickBooks. Uh, what I did is I took that data and I comp uh, took it directly against <clears throat> excuse me, I apologize, uh, the, the actual advertised budget for 2020 and made sure everything meshed up, that we didn't miss any categories or if there was things that were uh, named in one place but not named in another and making sure we didn't have any duplicates. Um, so at this point, that should be a pretty holistic reflection of what, what we have in terms of expectations for revenues and expenses for, excuse me, uh, 2021. Uh, on the overview sheet, I did build in uh, a thing where you can see the comparison based on millage rate for 2.0, 1.9, 1.8, 1.7. Um, the overall cost difference is is not outlandish between 1.7 and 2.0. I, I would love to, to lower taxes, but I know that's one of those things that once you take something away, the prospect of putting it back is extremely difficult and usually very ill-received. Um, and honestly, the, the, the revenue difference between the two is not that substantial. I'm, I'm thinking we should leave it at the two mills, mm -hmm. um, which unless I'm mistaken, we're actually right at kind of the average or a little below the average compared to a lot of other municipalities in the general area. 
Um, and quite frankly, we have no shortage of things that we need to do, that there's, there's plenty of opportunity, whether it's road work, building stuff, playground, you name it. Um, so on the, the 2.0 tab, there's a, a couple of spots that I have highlighted. I took some, some fairly conservative estimates on things, uh, for example, like building permits. Uh, I kept the 15,000 estimate for revenue on that. I'd much rather budget low and come in high on a revenue rather than the other way around and, and vice versa for expenses. Um, if we get more than that, which we had about $34,000 this year in revenue in that particular category, but with, uh, I know Stonecroft kind of reaching the end of their development cycle, I don't want to, I don't want to make a, a huge assumption on building permits, uh, only to have us fall very short. Um, all in all, I think the the revenue stuff was pretty straightforward. Did you guys have any questions or concerns or things that you wanted to to adjust? No, we Dan again, God bless him, helped me look through everything with street lights, and so there's a little bit of a, an adjustment there. So that calculation, our current revenue for street light is probably based on the frontage at 0.9. That's why there's more in there than what was anticipated. So. I mean, is Eileen responsible for that calculation and that tax? We we set the rate, so if she okay. collected the rate wrong, that's something that we would have to we would have to look at. But the rate address. is on the tax bill. Yeah, yeah, it, that, that's what I was saying to you, Sue. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's from a mathematical standpoint, it's a pretty basic calculation. You have X number of feet at X number of mm -hmm. cents. It should mm -hmm. be this amount of money. So the yeah. fact that we had more than the anticipated is. Well, a little confusing, but there's more in the account than anticipated. So yeah. that, you know, we have an, I don't want to say an excess, but we have more in the account probably because the, just the math of it, it was more was collected the year prior, more was, you know, the, the amount was collected that we need to collect for this year. And then just moving forward, it just, there's a lot more in that particular account because of the, the tax rate. So, yeah. I just, I, and I don't want to, can yeah. make a confusion on it. The expected 2020 budget that we had was like $3,200. And we have uh, year to date through October for collections almost like 1.7 well, times that. Um, let me let me see here. So the um, 5755 should be right about where it is based on the frontage number, if I remember the number yeah. in my head correctly and that so, was at that was at point nine though right rather than point five that point nine correct yeah so so i guess i can go back the number i reported is the number that's in the account mm -hmm. i have to go back and just add up the collections that we received so the number that that i reported is what was currently in the account so um oh, okay so I, I i apologize if i misread the sheet that you sent so that yeah. uh that uh, 52 53 number that you had there that's correct. That is, it, is that balance or is that revenue? I think that's revenue. Okay. I have to um, go back and, and just add up the numbers. Okay, because it should be revenue. It should be revenue. We shouldn't be talking balance. Right, this, right. I, I'm, this portion I'm sure, of it. I think, I think that is, but it may be the way I was looking at the number and how I exported it from QuickBooks also. Um, and we had a little bit of miscategorization with some of the chart of accounts. So it should be straightforward in, sh in sheet lights, but I will go back and refresh that number and make sure I get you the correct number for revenue that we received from street lights this year. Okay. Yeah. yeah Cause my, my immediate recollection of this last year is we actually, we had intentionally and we were planning on potentially doing the same for, for 2020 was undercutting a little bit because we had a surplus in the account. Mm -hmm. So we went from 0.9 down to 0.5. Um, again, based on the, the general burn rate, as I recollect it, was two, two to three years that we were going to do that to bring it back down to uh, a more appropriate level, simply because we had seen a, a pretty substantial cost savings after switching to the LED streetlights. Mm -hmm. So we didn't need to carry what amounted to two and a half times the, the annual uh, expected expense ratio mm -hmm. in that account which is why we, we toned it down. Mm -hmm. um, so at some point this week, if you're in the office, if you can oh, let yeah. me know what yeah. the, what the yeah. balance is and what the revenue was, I can, I can adjust the forecast a little bit, but we should, at the end of 2020, we should have basically two times what our, our annual expense 
is in that in that account. And if that's the case, then we should be, in my mind, continuing with that 0.5 rate into next year. Yeah. If we have to adjust it to potentially 0.7 or 0.75 in 2022, we can we can talk about it certainly at that point. Okay. But um, I would think it would be prudent to keep it low for for the one simple reason it's it's used only for street lights for that fund it's not like it can be reappropriated for something else right. and it doesn't do us a whole lot of utility to, to keep it sitting in the account i'd much rather keep it in in the constituents pockets absolutely yeah i mean we know utility rates go up and and that's uh easy enough to calculate anticipated increase in utility rates but um yeah i i, I want to say that i think the revenue is going to be closer to the 5755 because I, I think i'm pretty sure it was the 0.9 on the frontage calculation okay. that was used yeah let's double check the calculations yeah. and make yeah, sure that when we, we set the budget for next year that we do yeah. that that 0.5 rate by the front footage yep. um but uh of the of the funds the street light and the state were, were pretty straightforward they're pretty simple there's not a, a huge number of of account codes in either one of those yeah no Dan um, and i got everything straightened out everything's in the book so just a matter of adding up those numbers okay Irene, what uh when you go into the office yeah. on the desktop of the computer you're going to see uh, a excel spreadsheet account i created the new account sheet then go to sheet number two on that Okay. And you'll see, I plugged in the money for street lights that we awesome. collected each month, awesome. and it runs out on the total at the end. Excellent. And I'm thinking it was like twenty four hundred dollars and something I don't that know. we received. Okay, that that actually that sounds a little more. Where what I was thinking it was going to be because the the budget of that item that we had for 2020 was uh, basically like I said thirty two hundred dollars. So if people were delayed in in paying, that would make sense. Um, That's only up through October, so you still have November yeah. and December to yeah. put in there. But I went through the streetlight book and I took, okay. it, took each month's the, in okay. money. And yeah. put it in there. So take a look at that. That might answer oh, all your no, questions. That would be great. Thank yeah. you. That sounds like that's going to be distinctly helpful. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, thank you. Well, it just, uh, you know, I, I may have mistakenly sent you over the account balance rather than the revenue generated. So okay. simple enough. Let's just double check yeah. it. But I want to make sure that we set the right, the right expectation and the right calculation yeah. for, for next year's budget. Absolutely. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, the only thing I think worth highlighting is um, for the state fund, briefly touch on that. I made sure that we had the, the updated amounts for the anticipated liquid fuels and turn back allocations. Um, the, the interest on checking and savings is a, a ballpark figure that we usually take every year. Um, we usually, <laughs> for what it's worth, we set the interest on checking intentionally low again, because we'd much rather count on very little and get a lot potentially rather than the other way around. Um, really the big big item for attention is the maintenance and repairs uh i'm suggesting that we we shoot for four hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars worth of road work in 2021 mm -hmm. and we have the the balance in the account to be able to do that to between what we have now and what we're going to be getting in 2021 so between last year's uh, project packet and anything that we try to chase in in 2021 for new projects we should have uh, we should have a, a good footing to be able to, to afford those projects, uh, especially if we can offset some of them with grants, like uh, anything that we can get through dirt and low volume gravel road or, or anything else via Dean. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns or suggestions there? No, you saw the notice about the liquid fuels allocation. So we should be getting about 90,000 and change. Yep. So the, the, the version that's up on the Google drive is uh, I have 9841.85 was the, the item or the, the amount that was listed on that letter that you received. Okay, uh, I know in prior years we had not, especially I should say in 2020, we hadn't budgeted uh, for any kind of snow and ice removal. Um, I'm actually thinking we should probably put that back in. Mm -hmm. If we don't use it, that's swell, but uh, if we have to use it, it would be nice to have that there to be able to pay out of the state fund 
for the act of snow and ice removal rather than just potentially normal road work wages. Um, any objections to the 15? Do you think we should do 10? Because uh, thankfully, we I don't think we used it at all in 2019. And we obviously, thankfully, haven't had a, a clause for it in 2020 yet. But uh, we've still got two months. And it might be a little on the high side, but it could be in the case of uh, like catastrophic, catastrophic emergency. We could, again, do uh, equipment and wages and things like that out of that to, to offset that as need permitted. I'm good. Okay. Um, Jim, what are your thoughts? Should we do 10 or 15 on that one, or should we not budget that at all? Let's do 15. Okay. Okay. Again, it's, I think, better to, to have it planned and not need it than the other way around. So okay. on the, the general fund, and actually here, let me, I forget that I can do these things. Um, let me share, let me share the screen. That way everybody can see the same thing I'm looking at. Oh, you made it so pretty. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, tried to make sure everything was there and make it nice and neat and orderly so that whenever we we uh, adopt it, or I should say accept it for the, the use of the right term, once we accept it, it's in a format that can be easily printed out and, and made available. Um, not only so that we understand it, but everybody else that, that wants to look at it can understand it too. Um, so this is the direct calculation of the millage based at, at two mils and everything else. Again, I, I erred on the side of, of, of caution on doing things for, for example, real estate tax delinquent. I don't want to make any broad stroke assumptions there. We've received uh, more than we anticipated this year, uh, but I think it's a, a safe bet to kind of make that same safe assumption next year that we will probably get some money, but I don't want to make the assumption that just because we got $3,300 this year that we're going to get $3,300 next year. Real estate transfer, uh, again, aired on maybe a, a slightly optimistic side of uh, caution on that. We we got about 32000 up until October. Um, I'm thinking we should maybe make the assumption for either thirty two or thirty. Jim and Irene, what are your what are your thoughts? Should we keep it the same for 30000 I keep it at 30000 Okay. Agreed. Bear with me for just a second. Peter? Yes, sir. On your uh, interim taxes, I think you're kind of low there. Stonecroft Village still has approximately 12 pieces of property and maybe 10 homes that are under construction that okay. will enter into 2021. Okay. So I think you're going to get more interim tax money there than just a thousand dollars. Okay, so as a group, we've we've gotten about sixty eight hundred dollars so far this year. Um, do we want to make an assumption for around five on that? Because again, I don't want to I don't want to over over budget something in a revenue space. I think four, four between thirty five to four thousand dollars. Okay. So I'm I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of thinking for personally I'd rather do yep. that. Um, Jim, what are your thoughts? That's good. Four okay. is good. Okay. Can Going you down. Screen a little bit larger. Or yeah, yeah. Let me um. Yeah. Let me change the zoom. Oh God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the glories of technology. We can we can do that sort of thing. Um, okay. So next is. Real estate per capita prior year. Yeah, just leave it. I'd leave it as is. We got $100. I think that's been kind of the, the track record yeah. over the past number of years. Uh, real estate tax is current. We've gotten some, a little bit more than our, our budgeted 30000 And I think, again, that's been kind of the track record as, as years have, have gone yeah. past. Um, income had, tax. Go ahead. I'm sorry. We've had some issues with funds coming from the county. So it's just all strange it was very consistent at the beginning of the year and and it's just been coming in drips and drabs and i i can't i'm sure it's covid yeah. related no yeah. no doubt but 
Um, with that said, the, the year to date that we've gotten yeah. is probably actually low which is a pleasant surprise because of the delays that we've seen with getting money in from yeah. the, the sources of revenue. So we're actually probably going to be pretty heavily above that yeah. this year. But again, I, I don't want to, don't want to put all of our eggs in that basket only to have them, them not materialize. Um, we don't make any, we ha historically haven't made any assumptions or budgeting for, uh, earned income tax for prior years. Uh, we also don't make any assumptions around soliciting permits. Uh, while we do have that that ordinance uh, and uh, the permit to do it, um, and getting people to actually do it or making the uh, the expectation that we're going to have X number of them in a year, I think isn't isn't prudent to do. Mm -hmm. uh, the cable TV franchise um, has been actually going up in terms of revenue over the past number of years. Comcast yeah, um, is expensive. <laughs> yep. Um, so just as an adjustment, I'm suggesting 12000 instead of the 10000 based on the fact that we have, up until October, have had almost 13000 in revenue in that. That I think twelve is probably a pretty safe bet. Yeah, we only receive that quarterly. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll get another check, I think, usually in January for, for yeah. Q4. But yeah. uh, demolition permits, uh, we had we actually had somebody that, that filled one of those out this year. Uh, otherwise, we don't usually budget anything yeah. for that because that's few and far between. Uh, street openings, that's something that I think we need to get more on the, the respective uh, providers about actually doing, uh, but we don't tend to, to budget for that. If, if we have money come in, that's stellar, but we don't, again, make the, the expectation or assumption there for, for budgeting purposes. Comments under vehicle uh, code and violations. Mm -hmm. That number is probably what you um, a combination to. So that 1900 it, mm -hmm. is probably that because I don't think I discriminated between violations and uh, vehicle code. So okay, that's 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 okay. We'll just uh, if we can, we'll we'll try and split the we'll two up. No yeah. big deal. Um, for the purposes of budgeting, I wasn't gonna to put anything in yeah. for fines and violations if we have things that materialize there that's okay but um i'm gonna make the suggestion that we continue 2020's forecast with the 1500 okay again and then interest on checking interest on savings i'm gonna honestly say that uh we keep low the, the keep them low uh only slightly increasing the interest on checking because we have a pretty high volume in the checking account right now. Um, and then taking a conservative approach on the savings account. Uh, state grants is 150,000. We, we've gotten this year 133,540. So I was gonna suggest doing the 150,000 again, or potentially knocking it down a slight bit. Okay. Um, Jim and Irene, what are your thoughts at either setting that to 135, since it's pretty close to what we, we had for, for this year's budget, or keeping it the, the 150, which was the, the 2020 forecast? I'd knock it down to the 135. Okay. okay. Recycling grants, uh, we've actually gotten more this past year than we had originally anticipated. Um, I was kind of splitting the difference there between the 2,500 and the 1,500 uh, to, to 2,000. Uh, public utility realty taxes, again, undercut what our actual revenue was this year, but uh, ultimately was an increase over what we had budgeted for 2020. Uh, foreign fire is pretty straightforward. Uh, that's, uh, we get that and we immediately turn it over to the, the fire department. So it's essentially a pass through mm -hmm. uh, based on the fact that it was $12,901 and 23 cents this past mm -hmm. year. I figured we increased it to 13,000 and that would, since we don't know exactly what that's going to be annually, that would mm -hmm. keep us on, on target as a, a rough gauge. Um, <clears throat> subdivision and land development fees. Uh, we don't have anything budgeted there. Um, we haven't seen any, any use on that. In, in this past year and we didn't have anything budgeted uh, in 2020 or in 2019 for that particular code of accounts. Um, zoning permits, uh, we've actually had a lot of zoning permits um, and uh, we had originally budgeted 5,000. Um, I was gonna suggest increasing it to 10. I know we still have like 
Dan pointed out a number of places that are still actively in development, but uh, I don't want to make the assumption that we're going to get 31 and on, then ultimately only get only 10 or 15. Um, so for the purposes of a balanced budget, do you guys agree yeah. with the 10? Okay. Um, I'm going to skip over the the other ones that are, are non-items that hadn't been forecast in prior, prior years. Uh, building permits. Uh, we had originally anticipated 40,000 in 2020 and only got 34 so far this year. Um, I had suggested 15,000. Do we want to split the difference and go to 20 or like 22 based on the fact that we do know we have a, a number of places that are going to be actively uh, doing stuff, but uh, I, I think we're going to be seeing a slowdown this year into next year, just overall. I'd be okay with that at 20, because okay. we know, I think with, there are about a dozen houses, 10 or, or so houses in Stonecroft that are going to be going up, so, yeah. Okay. Jim, do you agree? Yes. Okay. Electrical permits, uh, we had one or two of those. Uh, probably actually one based on the fact that it's it's usually 50 bucks um <laughs> may have actually been me even um i don't think we should budget for that we shouldn't make that assumption i think that's too variable to try to to effectively forecast or, or make as a, a a solid assumption for for income uh the contracted mowing um i need to check what we actually spent in in 2020 for that I didn't have, <clears throat> excuse me, didn't have that immediately handy. Um, same thing with the contracted snow removal. I know we, know we got, going, we got two checks for like 748. Okay. So that's, that's like pretty much spot on. Okay. So then I won't worry about it then. Yeah. I'll put, I'll put that in for the purposes of, of actually like publishing the budget. But if that's pretty much right on the money, then we'll leave it at, at 1500. Yeah. Yeah. Um, same thing with the snow removal. I have to look back at, at what we had to, to pay last year. I don't, I don't think there was really any difference. There might have been a, a slight increase, and I'm trying to remember that because when, it was a couple of months ago that we talked about that and renewed it. I want to say it was like $32 yeah. I mean, for the year. Copy of the prior budgets that's in the folder that's sitting on the desk. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah I have the, the 2020 budget in front of me, but I know we actually we approved the, the agreement with PennDOT about mm -hmm. the, the contracted snow removal. I, I couldn't, couldn't immediately find it when I was digging around and... Uh, I'll, I'll update that, but I th I'm almost positive that it's right in that, that ballpark, that I'm either a slight bit above or a slight bit below on it. It's mm -hmm. got to be close to the mark. Um, so with that said, we would be looking at a, a total potential revenue of $609,975.80 for 2021. And as we move into expenses, um, because we've not been uh, billing for anything that we've been doing. The, uh, the overall salary for, for supervisors is lower than the normal. Uh, we were at, uh, as of October, about $2,400. Uh, we had budgeted about 45. Uh, I was suggesting that we budget like $4,300-ish for that. Um, again, if we don't use it, we come in under budget and that's fantastic. Um, but I don't foresee a lot of use for it. Um, whenever there are any kind of board changes, that'll be a number that we have to adjust if other people start actually billing for time. But I think that's a, quite frankly, a, a beyond 2021 problem for mm -hmm. us to face. Um, payroll services is pretty standard with the, the reduction in everything that we've had to pay for like supervisor wages and anything else, treasurer wages. Um, we utilized that. Uh, at a reduced rate, I would say. So I was suggesting that we decrease that from the 1750 that was budgeted in 2020 down to a thousand, which should be a little higher than uh, what we're anticipated to hit in 2020. Uh, other personal services is just kind of, kind of miscellaneous for, for staffing and things like that. Um, I'm not thinking we should budget. That's kind of a, a kind of a catch-all category for things. Um, we had a, a minimal amount of use for that this year, but we did we did have an expense that was categorized there. Uh, we don't contribute to employee benefits. Um, postage, 
Uh, we hadn't budgeted anything in 2019 or 2020, but uh, I agree with the suggestion that you had passed over about doing about $100 yeah, stamps. Worth, worth of that just for stamps, yeah. envelopes, and everything else. Um, telephone and internet. Um, I'm actually going to be proposing a lower amount for, for two reasons. One, uh, we got a little bit of a very small amount of cost efficiency out of the, the change in the Comcast plan. And uh, I'd like to split this actually into a total of three categories where three things have been aggregated into this previously. Um, actually, I should say two. I think the emergency management thing is the radios. Um, so previously that was in communication was the website, right. the Comcast, the internet and phone. And uh, now, now that we've been doing the, the Zoom stuff, the, the Zoom subscription, um, I'd like to keep the telephone and internet in its own category and set up a new code of account for uh, what I, uh, as a draft called website and multimedia, where we would put the, the cost of civic CMS and uh, anything else that we needed to get to, to keep things up and running, whether it's uh, microphones for the tables when we start doing uh, in-person meetings again, or a, uh, a dedicated webcam so that we can, we can get the, the kind of visibility that we need to continue putting the meetings up on YouTube after the fact. Uh, that kind of stuff into that category. Uh, the emergency management for communications was, I know we need to get a, like a, a pager. Correct. We have and, to replace the pager that was uh, lost and a radio so that uh, we are on the same frequency as the county. Yep. And uh, if memory served me, the, the general estimate for those pieces of equipment was about $1,500. Um, no, well, I'm not quite sure. So it okay. might be more. Okay. Because we don't know how much the pager is or the radio. And John's trying to get hold of someone at the county level to find out what we need to replace that. Okay. So, pager. yes, sir. Uh, going back to postage. Yes. Uh, I think your $100 is very low. You're going to have a big mail route. The okay. beginning of the year with your your letters mm -hmm. regarding pump out and zoning yep and that has to go one to every person in the community okay so so that's a fair about that that's a fair point we have we have a little bit of uh, variability in the budget right now and this is the, the I think the, the principal reason that we, we're going through this is to to get yeah. the, the fine-tuning in place for that okay. um, uh, I'd actually, if, under that lens, do we want to potentially put it up to 500? If we don't oh. use it, that's fantastic. But it would give us the the cap space that if we did want to send out a, a newsletter, that we would have that have that built into the budget, or if we had to send out any notices or reminders around things. Yeah. Well, just based on what Dan said, I mean, we're looking at spending uh, about $400 or more to the residents, all the residents in postage. Okay. Just so for, like one mass mailing. The next question right. is, is $500 potentially too low? Should we go to 1000 or 1500 I go to $1,000. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Yeah, very, very, very good call out. Thank you for that, Dan. Okay. Uh, emergency management. I'm actually, just for the sake of, of safety net, I'm going to put that to 2500 as well, as uh, like we did for telephone and internet. Mm -hmm. um, again, if we come in under budget, that's fantastic. But since yeah. we, we don't know, and we can, we can adjust it between now and Thursday if we get an answer, but um, since we do need to replace that pager and, and get the, the requisite radio, that uh, we want to make sure we have the, the funds available to do so. Yeah. I'm thinking that number is probably going to be closer to 5,000. Okay. So let's, uh, let's put that in. I'll put an asterisk here. That way we can jump back to it if needed. Uh, advertising. Um, we didn't do a whole lot of advertising this year with COVID and everything else going on. There really wasn't a ton of advertising that we did. Uh, I was suggesting that we keep it at 30, excuse me, at $3,500. Mm -hmm. Do subscription and memberships, uh, just that it's slightly down from our anticipated 2020 amount of $300 down to 250. Uh, we've only used $210 of, of that this year. Mm -hmm. uh, granted, it's artificially low because of COVID. We didn't have a lot of people going places or doing things, but we did still pay the usual like PSATs and everything else. Um, conferences and meetings. Um, I'm thinking we should budget $600, just a general principle that uh, the cost of things is going up every year. And if we do send people to like the dirt and low volume gravel road things, or if Sue needs to go to a convention or, or any meetings or anything like that, uh, that we have the, 
a little bit of money there to offset that. Uh, contributions and donations, I'm suggesting that we continue with the, the $1,500 amount that we had for 2020. Uh, salaries for auditors, $100. Uh, we only used $29.90 of that this year. Uh, and that's the, the elected auditors rather than the, the auditing company that we appoint for, for that service. Uh, other, which is again, like I had mentioned before, kind of a catch-all if we have a overrun in any of the other categories or things that are non-categorical. Uh, it has been $3,500 for the past two years. I suggest we, we keep it the same. Uh, auditing and bookkeeping. Uh, we had budgeted and projected about $8,500 based on the agreement with RKL. Uh, with our anticipated shift to Aikens potentially, I adjusted that down to 6,000, which was a little bit higher than what their, their estimate was, but I wanted to, to build in a little bit of, of buffer there rather than using an exact amount. Tax collector, uh, this is based on the rate that uh, the tax collector gets as a fee. Um, we had originally budgeted $9,055 and zero cents for 2020. Uh, pretty much right on that uh, as of October. And uh, based on a, an anticipated increase just in the assessed value that we received that report, I wanna say it was the 23rd of October for, for next year's assessed values for, for the purposes of millage, uh, that would be the, the amount that the, the tax collector would get in commission. Uh, tax collector supplies, I'm suggesting that we keep it the same, the 200 amount that we had in the, the years prior. Uh, the other services and charges, keeping that the same, we're a little bit below what our, our budgeted amount is for this year as of October. Um, but even between now and year end, if there was an expense that, that came up, we probably would still be right at that $500 mark. Uh, government law and professional services, which is the solicitor we had uh, in 2019 budgeted 50,000. In 2020, we budgeted 35. As of October, we had come in at about 40,000. It's uh, $40,297.82. Uh, I'm suggesting that we adjust the budgeted amount to 42 as a, a more prudent reflection of, of what we actually tend to use on an annual basis for, for solicitor fees. Mm -hmm. uh, the salary of secretary. So this is what we had wanted to discuss a little bit. Uh, currently Sue's hourly rate as appointed in 2020 is $18.50. Mm -hmm. um, based on a rough calculation, if we gave Sue a raise to $20 an hour, which I have been looking around at various job market sites and uh, any municipal statistics that I can get my hands on. Uh, the average for municipal secretaries with a, a high degree of experience is in the neighborhood of 20 to $22 an hour. Mm -hmm. um, if you start to go more into the neighborhood of between 15 and 18, you're looking at basic clerks and essentially like greeters, uh, clerical assistants where you're, you're photocopying things and, and not doing all the things that Sue does. Um, so based on 32 hours a week, 26 pay cycles in a year at $20 an hour, it would be about $33,280 for gross pay. Mm -hmm. Can I just um, make a comment? I guess you did not receive a pay increase last year. Mm -hmm. but I definitely think we need to compensate her for that too. No, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And, uh, all other things considered, I want to make sure that we're one, we're being fair to Sue and that we are still competitive in the market. Uh, thankfully, Sue is not looking for another job as far as I know, but I want to make sure that we are, we are doing our due diligence in being a responsible employer. Um, so what are, what are your thoughts at the, the $20 an hour mark? Irene and Jim. It's the least we can do. Okay. Okay, so if we're, we're all on board there, I think we're good. And like I said, that, that makes the, the calculated assumption that there's 32 hours a week, 26, uh, 26 pay cycles in the year at $20 an hour. Um, also included in the budget uh, is a little bit of a down uh, 
downturn for his salary of part-time clerical and secretary. Um, this would uh, largely encompass Dan, Dan's involvement. Uh, previously, this had been what Peter Wallace was doing around some of like the, the treasurer work and everything else. Um, I don't think we need the 16,000 in there based on what the anticipated uh, work volume is and, and what Dan's going to be involved in. I think 10,000 is probably a, a little more um, realistic of a, a budget item, possibly a little on the high side, if I can be honest. Um, but again, I'd rather assume that we're going to... Uh, I'm sorry, say that again? Okay, maybe Irene stepped away and was talking to somebody else, but... Um, I'd rather assume that we're going to have the need and the, the, the money to pay for it rather than the other way around. And there's no shortage of things that we can do in the office and need the extra set of hands for. There's tons of stuff that we can reorganize or file. Um, there's tons of things that we can go through, like we were talking about with the garage that Dan can assist with and, and getting things cataloged and organized. Um, Irene, I know you had to step away for just a second, likely to, to get a refreshed cup cup yeah. of coffee I'm, I'm running low myself <laughs> um for the salary of part-time clerical secretary which is essentially the the capacity that dan is going to be in there and assisting i had proposed ten thousand, which is about a basically seven thousand dollar reduction um off of the the 2020 budget item and i think that is going to be a relatively accurate estimate if not a little bit on the high side for the the total expense for for dan's assistance throughout 2021 Okay. Uh, secretary conventions. Uh, we have previously budgeted in 2019 $500. Uh, we actually didn't budget anything in 2020. We've only had $50 worth of expense into that category. Um, I'm suggesting that we we kind of take the median approach and go with 150 mm -hmm. on that. Uh, Sue doesn't tend to go to a lot of conventions, but uh, I'd like to have it there that if there was one that she needed to attend, that she could. Uh, Secretary Office Supplies, uh, 2019, we were budgeted for $1,200. Uh, 2020, we were budgeted for five. Uh, we've used about $350-ish, $354.90. Um, I'm suggesting that we uh, budget for 500 since that seems to be probably the, the sweet spot. That's right, because I make everyone give us back our paper clips. <laughs> also, I'm not sure what Dan is reading. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, Dan, Dan may be trying to show us something, but... Um, Office equipment, we have previously budgeted $1,500. We've not used any of it in 2020. Um, this would be if we wanted to buy like a new multifunction device for scanning, printing, copying, et cetera, or if we had any replacements that we needed around computer devices. Um, we haven't, uh, let me actually put an asterisk there. We haven't used any yet. Uh, I did, per board approval, pick up additional memory uh, replacement drives and some other uh, sundry odd, odds and ends for the the office computers to make them uh, a little a little more pleasant to use and run a little better. Um, I have one of the desktops done and and set up and ready to go. I need to bring that in and swap that out and clone everything over off of the machine that you and Dan are using, um, and then start working on that one. And then I'll do Sue's. Uh, I'll put the memory in it because that's pretty pretty straightforward and I don't have to interrupt you a lot but uh, at some point once I have the the second computer done I'll switch that out for yours clone everything over that way everybody essentially gets a, a refresh on equipment that it's it's working with a, a faster processor a better hard drive and more memory um, the other thing that would fall into that category for this year is the the, the local server that I put together for doing our, our file storage our backups and file storage because right now we don't other than a flash drive, we don't have any redundancy about any things that exist in a digital format. Thankfully, just about everything is still in a paper format and will continue to be in a paper format. But as we start to move into the model of having more things digital and available on the website, we need to have some sort of appliance to do it. Um, that's just about done. I need to t take it in, install it, and do the final configuration on it. But uh, between now and I would say potentially even November's meeting, I may have receipts to turn in that would fall into this category. Um, I'm thinking we should still, for next year, we won't have any of the, the big spends around PCs or, or computer storage, but we could have a need for a printer uh, or a piece of software for, for scanning things in better, or 
any number of things. I think we should still leave that at the 1500. Okay. Uh, transportation, uh, we have that budgeted at 100. We had it as 100 in 2019, didn't budget anything in 2020. Uh, we've seen about $31 in use this year. I'm thinking we should just leave it at the 100. Uh, the insurance and bonding, we had originally budgeted $800. Uh, so far this year, we've spent $729. Um, I think there's, if I'm not mistaken in that, we need to still get the check cleared for Dan's bonding as the assistant treasurer. Yeah, I'm just wondering why that number's not there. I still don't remember we, that check. Uh, I was going to say, because I know we, we had motions to do right. it. So right. uh, my who had contacted the insurance company that said oh, it was done, but I don't know why yeah. it's not there. They may have not, may just not have processed the check. So uh, we need to follow up on that as just kind of a, a housekeeping item. But I'm thinking next year with the the two of you having the the two people in a box, so to speak, for for that function, which I think is good. That way, it's always covered. Uh, it's going to be about fifteen hundred dollars, which is I, I basically took the the seven hundred and twenty nine that it I, I know it costs for your bonding and just doubled it. Yeah. Uh, secretary, bank charges. Um, we tend to avoid bank charges. We did have a, a small set of fees around some of the, the online banking things that we did to get the account straightened out mm -hmm. at the start of the year. Uh, we previously budgeted $100 in 2019, 2020. We had budgeted 50. Uh, this year we saw $74.40. So a little higher than normal. I'm thinking we should go back to 2019's expectation of $100 just in case. Mm -hmm. Uh, simply because there may be things that we need to leverage from the financial institution to make the whole process of, of keeping things uh, neat and, and orderly uh, a reality. That number should be going down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So just for, for anybody that's that's watching this live or after the fact, that's not something that we we take lightly. That's something that we watch very closely, but there were some things. It's not like late fees or anything like that or overdraft fees. It's um, there were there were some tools that that cost small amounts per month that we we utilized throughout the course of the year to make sure that we were able to to get things reconciled and straightened out and uh, ready for the audit. Okay, moving into the next category, uh, building wages. That's uh, an item that we don't tend to have any use in. We've not budgeted for it in the past. Uh, building supplies, we had it marked at $1,000 in 2019. We actually didn't budget anything in 2020, but saw about $271 in, in use. Uh, I'm thinking we should actually put that in as 1000 Again, if we don't inherently use it, we come in under budget, and that's fantastic. Uh, but it does give us the capacity to be able to buy certain things for the building as supplies if we find we need to get new smoke detectors or fire extinguishers or um, we want to stock up on toilet paper um, that we have the, the the budget capacity to do so without having to worry about it. Uh, heating fuel is no longer used because we switched over to the gas heater. Uh, small tool and minor equipment was something that we had not budgeted for in the past. We did use $130.95 this year. Uh, I'm thinking we should budget 200 just in case. And again, if we don't need it, we come in under budget. Uh, other services and charges we haven't budgeted for in the past. And I don't really foresee a need to do that. That's kind of a catch-all. Um, public utilities and gas, uh, we budgeted 4,000 in 2019. But just, I, just to go back to what you were talking about earlier in the meeting, mm -hmm. other services and charges, that's what we're going to be using to decommission the old furnace. So... Uh, or I was actually assuming that that would probably fall into building repairs and maintenance services. Yeah. Um, that, that was at least my, yeah. my standpoint on that. Um, although equal, both would be equally yeah. applicable, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, in the subject of gas, uh, we've actually, we've come in tremendously under the mark because of not having people in the building for meetings, uh, and only having to heat the office for Sue when she's in there. Um, I don't think 2020 is a good barometer on, on use for that. So I was going to suggest that we, we kind of, uh, I guess, take a, a kind of a conservative approach on that and say 3000. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I don't think we're going to hit the 5,000 just on the, the basis of efficiency for the, the heaters that we have in there now. And around the fact that uh, hopefully in 2021, we'll have some, some success with replacing some of the windows in the meeting room. So the, the spaces that we are heating 
uh, are going to do it a lot more efficiently than they are now. So we're going to be on a, a path of continual improvement. And we're going to see a lot of the, the associated costs. We're going to have an out-of-pocket for, for doing those improvements, but we'll start to see a return on investment in some of the other categories uh, almost immediately. Okay, next is the public utility services, the electric. Uh, we had budgeted $1,700 in 2020 for that. Uh, so far, as of this point in the year, and again, I think that one of the, the contributing factors is we haven't had like the AA in there. We haven't had our meetings in there. It's just been Sue and like you and Dan in the office during the day, um, the road crew coming and going, lights on, that sort of thing. Uh, we've actually come in substantially below that mark, but uh, based on the fact that I don't think 2020 is a great barometer on that, I was suggesting 2000, just in case we do return to some semblance of normality and we start having a lot more meetings there. Uh, we start using like the pressure washer and things like that more extensively that we could see a, a general increase in use, not to mention generally the rates and of things go up just over the course of the year. Um, building repairs and maintenance services. This is the, the, the big one. This is things like the, the soffit and fascia repairs that we still have outstanding. Um, removing the old steam heaters that are in the meeting rooms and closing in the, the holes that go to the outside for those units, um, as well as any other projects that we'd like to, to undertake from a, a building standpoint. Uh, we had budgeted 40000 in 2019. We had reduced that to 30000 in 2020. Uh, I'm actually suggesting that we put that back up to 40000 or depending on after, let's let's go through the, the whole budget and see where we're at in terms of, of being balanced. But if we have the cap space, I would like to see us maybe su split any surplus that we have into this and roads. Okay. Okay, going to the next item that we have, uh, we have police, other services and charges. Uh, this is one that I want to check because I know the, the annual rate for next year for Tulpa Hawken is this number. Uh, I think the way this was budgeted in the past and it's been aggregated in use also includes the dispatching fees that we have from the county. Okay, because that's, um, that's a $12,000 charge on top of that then. Yeah, that's, yeah, because that actually, that makes, that makes sense from a math standpoint because yeah. the... The police fee was about fifty thousand. It was like fifty thousand one hundred and some odd. Four one seven nine fifty uh, a month. So okay, because I'm like, why is that number seem so low? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. dispatching it, is an additional twelve thousand. So tag on twelve thousand yeah. onto that. Yeah. So that was that was actually my yeah. my follow up question is rather than commingling it in police, do we want to put a separate code of accounts so that we can keep track of the two distinctly? I'm fine with that. Okay. So we could create a new category. Yeah. If you could, at some point, I'll need you to go into the office and we'll work with the chart of accounts and add these in. Certainly, certainly, certainly. That makes uh, sense. But that was that was the reason that I, I had highlighted that is I wanted to make sure that my my assumption was correct. But uh, that's to me that's a much cleaner way of tracking that because then we would be able to run reports on cost of police services over yeah. a period as well as cost of di like public safety dispatching over a, a period of time. Yeah. Um, let me actually quick right. check the, the note the note that I made in my mm -hmm. phone here. Um, pol yeah, police dispatch was actually for 2021, $12,743.86. Um, we also had a listed cost for fire dispatch and EMS dispatch. Um, EMS is listed here. And that is actually, that's expected to be this. 2021 and the fire dispatch is actually supposed to be three thousand seven hundred and seventy seven dollars and ninety seven cents so those are actually already categorized independently okay and these numbers are the valid numbers for 2021 okay. um, 
fire radios, we haven't budgeted anything in the past for this because this is usually something that the fire company gets and is, is different a little bit than the, the EMS radio that we were talking about earlier. Um, or I should say the EMC. I don't want to don't want to confuse terminology. Two are remarkably close. Um, the EMS radios, or I should say, actually, hold on. Let me let me check to make sure I didn't substitute a letter when I shouldn't have. Okay. Yep. So I think I I think I actually double dipped on that one. So the EMS radios is something that we have as a code of accounts. And actually, let me, let me check something real quick. Yeah. So that's that's that line yeah. item potentially. Yeah. Um, since that one, I was proposing it as a new one. Let's let's get rid of that, and I will put. put this down here okay. rather than creating essentially a duplicate. That makes more sense. Yeah. Okay. EMS radios. We don't budget anything normally for code enforcement for sewage or UCC. Uh, planning and zoning. Uh, we had budgeted $60,000 in 2019, uh, 120000 in 2020. And we have used as of the, the end of October seventy three thousand nine hundred nine hundred and fifty three dollars and fourteen cents. Um, I'm suggesting that we continue with the hundred and twenty thousand in twenty twenty one. And again, if we come in under budget, that's fantastic. But um, I think the expectation is there based on just kind of current volume. We had a little bit of a slowdown because of COVID, but if people come out of that and uh, start doing stuff that requires that, I think we're going to see a an increase on that, ideally in 2021, if everything clears. Um, public safety emergency management, uh, 2019, we had budgeted 250. Uh, we actually didn't budget anything in 2020 because of the lack of a, an emergency management coordinator. Uh, I'm suggesting that we budget $1,000 mm -hmm. for that, uh, as we're, we're essentially going to be playing catch up on a lot of things in that yeah. space, uh, as well as uh, while the, the EMC itself is not a paid position. Uh, we do reimburse mileage. Right. Um, I'm suggesting that we, we allocate $150 yeah. for mileage. God willing, we don't have to use it, but uh, in the I event of- on that. Yes. Um, again, for public knowledge, the EMC needs to attend certain courses in order to maintain that certification. So there's, it's something that's required by the state. Yep, absolutely. And that's actually a good reminder. I went down the, the avenue of he has to drive out for a response, but yeah. that's a that's a very, very valid point that yeah. he does have to attend a, a certain number of yeah. uh, seminars, conferences, et cetera, to, as continued learning. Yep. So far, so, everything that he's done has been online, and I think it's been at no cost, but um, I know there's other things he needs to do. Okay. So with that said, uh, with that added added dimension there, do you think $150, if we do have a situation where things shift from being online to being in person again, is that an appropriate amount or should it actually be no, higher? No, it's, it's an appropriate amount because he's only going to be responding to something in town. Well, no, I meant for like if he has to drive to uh, those courses. A conference. Um, yeah, no, I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this I didn't have immediately at my disposal, but the re recycling collection and disposal uh, we had in 2019, $1,500 as an estimated cost. Uh, 2020, we estimated about a thousand. Um, prior to us accepting this, we're going to have to put that in, but I wasn't sure what we had actually spent because I couldn't find that on the, the consolidated report. And we just got to make sure that it's, it's captured or categorized correctly. It's in, it's in there somewhere. Cause I know we've, we've paid for it. Um, Sewage enforcement officer is pretty much a, a, a pass through in, in some other revenue, but uh, we have seen an uptick in the costs that we have to allocate for the SEO. And as people have to go through that, that pump out and inspection regimen, uh, we are going to see that be uh, more of a, a structural item that we see every year when we have one third of the township every four years going through the, the act of having their, their systems inspected. Um, we had about $6,800, $6,809.77. Uh, 
uh, thus far as of October. Um, I think 7,000 is probably a, a, a relatively reasonable estimation of that yeah. based on what we've seen. It yes. might be a low number because of the ordinance and the information mm -hmm. loaded going out. So, do you think that ten thousand would be more appropriate? Probably. Okay. Yeah. And even though it is a pass through for the most part, so. Yeah, there's there's very little that we take. Yeah. Kind of out of pocket for these things. It's uh, Gary or the SEO bills. Mm -hmm. We take the check, so we have a, a revenue that comes in on that, and then. We turn around and, and pay Gary. Um, so there shouldn't be uh, any loss there. It should be like essentially uh, even on that. But uh, you, may be, you may be right that 10,000 is a little more of an appropriate number with the, the increase in demand that we're going to be anticipating. Mm -hmm. Highways and other personal services. Uh, we had budgeted 1,000 in prior years. Uh, and I should say in 2019, 2020, we budgeted $500. Uh, there was no use recorded for that category in 2020. Um, I left it blank because I wanted everybody's input on that. Do you think we should once again budget something for that? Because this is essentially this category's catch-all. It's the the other, the the junk drawer, if you will, of we, <laughs> we have an expense and we don't know which one that it really fits into. Um, for uh for for wages professional services essentially leave it a thousand dollars just okay. In case. okay operating supplies uh we have previously budgeted high on that seven thousand we haven't we've used about seven hundred this year seven hundred and forty seven dollars and sixty cents um i was thinking like twelve hundred dollars because there's there's some other categories that we could use in money out of the state fund depending on what projects we're doing um, that we wouldn't inherently need to budget a large amount for operating supplies there, especially because a lot of the, the road work, especially the larger projects are going to be handled uh, through the other funds. Mm -hmm. uh, do you both feel that $1,200 is, is appropriate or would you rather see us take essentially like the half of that 7,000 and go to 3,500? I would probably go to 3,500 at this point. Okay. Okay, supplies, repair, maintenance, service. Uh, we have previously budgeted $2,500 in both years. We've used about 2,000 and honestly kind of anticipate using about 2,000 through the course of 2020. Um, I'm thinking we should leave it at $2,500. Uh, we haven't allocated any capital purchases in any prior years. I don't think it's a good time to start. Uh, cleaning of uh, streets and gutters. Uh, we had budgeted 800 in 2019, 900 in 2020, and just the general vein of things getting more and more expensive every year, I was going to suggest $1,000 for having the street sweeping that we have done annually every year. Okay, uh, highways, snow, and ice wages. Um, this is kind of a separate thing from the road crew wages uh, that we, we try to keep track of uh, wages specifically related to plowing if we have snow. Um, $10,000 was what was budgeted in 2019. We actually didn't use this category in 2020. Uh, instead, putting more money into the, the road crew wages for, for this year. I'm actually thinking we should reallocate the money there. And uh, we'll, when we get to the, the road crew wages in just a second, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on, on why specifically. Um, do you guys agree with, with allocating the money there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, supplies for snow and ice removal. Um, we had $1,000 in 2019, 5000 in 2020. Um, I'm actually suggesting uh, we haven't used it at all in 2020 as of yet, leaving it at 5000 and then using that uh, to potentially do things with uh, any service, remediation, or supplementary items for the, the plow trucks, whether it's uh, extra pieces of equipment, a new salt spreader, a new plow, new lights on the trucks, things like that. Okay, uh, machine rental. Uh, we had 5,000 in 2019, 2,000 in 2020. Uh, we haven't actually used any of it, uh, I think largely because of COVID in 2020. Um, I'm thinking we should once again go to 5,000. And the reason that I make this suggestion dovetails into the, the, the road crew wage statement that I'm going to make in a little bit is 
with all the road projects that we're going to be doing, there's going to be a bunch of stuff that we put out to bid and we have outside firms do. But there are a number of things that I'd like to see us start to leverage the road crew, our, our existing staff, more and more on. And I want to make sure that we have the budget capacity to be able to do things like rent uh, a backhoe um, or anything else that we need there uh, to be able to go through and uh, perform some of the, the road maintenance that we are capable of doing. Uh, street signs and markings. Uh, we had 5,000 budgeted over the past two years. Uh, we used about $3,700. It was $3,795.50. Um, I'm suggesting that we continue to keep that at the 5,000. Uh, repair of tools and machinery. Um, we had budgeted 10,000 in 2019, 15,000 in 2020. Um, we haven't actually used any of it yet. So I'm gonna suggest that we crank that back down to 10,000. Um, Thankfully, we haven't had yet any any issues, and I'll, I'll find something wooden to knock on as soon as I can, uh, where we've had large repairs to, to any of the, the, the machinery or tools. But uh, we definitely need to, to keep that on the, the radar, so to speak, because it's going to happen at some point. We're going to have to have something replaced or repaired or... Um, really anything along those lines. I know I won't go too far down the rabbit hole with the, the sandblasting and powder coating of the, the other truck, but um, we may find a point where we need to do some preventative maintenance or some repair on something so that we can keep the trucks in service. Uh, highway supplies, um, we budgeted $1,000 in 2019 and 2020. We've only used about $100 of that. Um, I, I anticipate that to go up by the end of the day today, even after I give uh, the guys the laundry list of the things that we need to pick up, like additional wiper blades and things like that. I don't anticipate it to go up tremendously. We're not going to buy $900 worth of wiper blades, but um, I think it is a, a, a reasonable estimation to have that for supplies, operating supplies throughout the course of the year. Okay, we don't do anything with other... Uh, highway rentals, uh, we had budgeted 2000 in uh, 2019 and 2020. Uh, we haven't used anything yet. And, and honestly, I don't, I don't foresee us getting any, uh, any expenses incurred in that category in 2021. Um, based on just what our, our, our general outset is, I don't think we're going to have any costs there. Um, we can certainly circle back to that if anybody uh, disagrees or has any a commentary therein, but that's that's one that I don't I don't think over the past three years we've seen any any use categorically in. Um, uh, maintenance and repair of ro roads and bridges. Other, uh, we don't tend to, to allocate in that. Uh, highway construction wages. Uh, we don't have anything in there. Uh, construction, we have 50000 that was allocated in 2019. We actually didn't allocate in 2020 uh, because of some of the, the culvert things that we had to do. Uh, we actually had a, a cost of about $127,000. Um, I'm suggesting that we, we go to 80000 on that to supplement what we're going to be doing with the state fund. So uh, we'll, we'll be doing the lion's share of the work in terms of road correction and paving and everything else through the state fund, and then be uh, ideally using this 80,000 to dovetail with uh, any projects that we can do locally in terms of the road crew, uh, regrading things or fixing gutters or uh, swales or whatever. Um, that uh, there's a, a number of projects we just have to see what we have the skill set, the time, and the the ability to, to either rent or use equipment to be able to do and, and make sure that we're, we're tackling things that are actually achievable. Um, and it's alarming how fast $80,000 will go on a road project. Okay. Uh, engineering services stormwater. Uh, we had budgeted 10000 for that in 2019. Didn't budget for it in 2020. We have yet to see a use for it in 2020. Um, the question to the two of you is, do you think we should not budget for it or should we budget for 10,000? Um, I know there's a number of areas that there are some complaints around storm water. 
that I, I think it may be high time that we, we, we leverage that and then turn McCarthy Engineering loose on a, a couple of tactical locations to say, tell us what we need to do to fix this. And again, it's, it's alarming how fast $10,000 will go on a like five or six projects for engineering. So I would like to budget for it because we're having increased rain. Yes. Definitely. That's my, my thoughts. Exactly. We already have some, some problem areas to begin with. And I think we're, we're going to have more and more problem areas as the years go on. Okay. Uh, moving into the next category. We are looking at recreation and other services. We have previously budgeted 5,000 for this. Uh, this has largely been used for uh, things like the uh, mowing of the field, maintenance on the playground, uh, be that as it is. Um, we have used this uh, kind of as a last minute sort of thing for buying like the picnic tables like we did last year. Uh, Kelly, since you're on, we have, we have some budget space if the MTCA wants to bring us a proposal uh, for something that they'd like to do that fits within the confines of that budget. We do have that available in the fund. Uh, if we don't use it, we can certainly reallocate it into 2020, 20, uh, excuse me, 2021, uh, or just carry over the $5,000 amount. So I guess the question for us as a board is, do we want to keep it at 5,000 or do we want to carry over the, the 2020 funds into 2021 and allocate it as 10? I don't know. Okay. And that's, that's something we can discuss more at Thursday night's meeting. Um, I'm kind of, just as a, a personal reflection, I'm kind of inclined to keep it at 5,000 just for this year. And then once we know uh, a little more acutely the timetable, because I, I think even if the MTCA applied for a grant and they needed matching funds or contribution for funds, they probably wouldn't get anything awarded or or really money changing hands throughout the course of 2021. Even if they did it beginning of the year, you're talking probably 2022. Um, that would be the time if we were going to substantially assist with that, with a, a matching, would be to do it in 2022 and then potentially ratchet that up to a higher amount. Um, and uh, I know Kelly was on. Um, if you want, Kelly, uh, I will... I will send you an ask to unmute. If you want to unmute, feel free. If you don't, we'll keep moving. But uh, since you're probably the, the sole representation for the MC, MTCA, other than uh, myself as a, a member and previous liaison or Jim as the liaison currently to the MTCA, um, I think we I think $5,000 is probably a, appropriate or, or potentially more than appropriate for just a, an annual normal operating budget. Um, in future years, I'd love to see us allocate more money to, to rehabbing that space alongside that group. But I, don't, I honestly don't think we're going we're gonna to find traction on executing a number of those things in 2021 for various reasons. Okay, I don't, I don't see her unmuting yet. So, uh, Jim. Yes. Oh, oh, there you are. Hey, Kelly. Hi. So uh, first and foremost, we uh, just as a, a general FYI, we do have some some room in 2020's budget for capacity. If the MTCA has something that they'd like to target, like we did last year with the, the picnic tables and the benches, um, and then going into 2021, we're we're at least thinking to keep the the annual amount the same, uh, with the potential premise that if we don't use the money when you guys actually get to the point of uh, requiring a matching for a grant or contributions for a grant for the actual playground equipment that we could potentially uh, increase that budget amount higher to, to assist with that. Yes, um, at this, as of today, I don't know of a particular project um, to propose to you, but I will talk to the committee and see if they do um, have something for um, Thursday evening's meeting. Okay. And like I said, we don't, for the, for the purposes of 2021, uh, I think it's probably a reasonable assessment to keep it the same. But for the purposes of 2020, we do have the money allocated there. So if you guys can give us a, a written proposal on, on something that you'd like to do, it doesn't necessarily have to be at the November meeting, could be at the December meeting. December meeting would be like the, the latest 
that we could do it. Um, but if there is something that we want to try to utilize that money in this calendar year, please get it to us and, and we'll be happy to review it. And you're saying there's $5,000 left for 2020. There's a total of $5,000 in there and I got to double check. I didn't see any uh, expenses accrued to that particular item. Um, usually I think like Don's mowing goes in there, but that's a, a relatively small percentage of that in the grand scheme of things throughout the course of the year. Um, depending on where his stuff got allocated, he might've gotten just paid straight out of like road crew wages. Um, at, road crew yeah, wages. which at, at that point, you actually would have the full 5,000 if, if that's a, a true reflection that we haven't had any expenses there. Um, and the picnic tables. Well, that was, that, have... that was actually 2019. That's, we did the okay. same thing last year that we went to you guys late in the year when we were doing budget around October or November and said, hey, we haven't used this yet. It's still available. Do you guys have something that you, you specifically want to do? And that's when, like, uh, I think it was you and um, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't Don. Either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, you guys came to us as a, as a committee and, and said we'd like to, to spend this money on these tables for the, the pavilion area. We're in a, a similar, if not exact, sort of situation where we have allocated but unspent money that it'll roll over. It's not like it's going anywhere. It'll be in the, the general fund still, but um, we did anticipate right. using it. So if you have a use for it, let's, let's do it. it. Okay. I will research that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next is the social security for our, the township employees, the, our share. Uh, as of the end of October, we had spent about $3,700. I was suggesting that we, we do 5,000 on that just as a, a safe bet, especially if we do see an increase in time used um, and corresponding wages that go along with it. Uh, secretary contribution to benefits, uh, 2019 was 4,500, 2020 was 4,800. Um, we had the approved, because I actually went back and looked at the reorg minutes, uh, a contribution amount of $4,062.12 for Sue this past year. Um, I'm suggesting, especially in light of the proposed pay raise for Sue, uh, increasing that to 5,000 so that we have a, an appropriate amount in there to, to cover that contribution. Okay, uh, next is insurance premiums at uh, $35,000 in 2019. Uh, we had budgeted 30,000 in 2020 based on a, a general observed uh, efficiency and decrease overall in the plan. Um, as of the end of October, we have used $22,365.26 uh, with a projected uh, outset of about $25,000 between here and year end. I'm suggesting that we, we budget $27,000 for that next year. Uh, miscellaneous expenditures, uh, we hadn't been budgeted for at all in 2019 and 2020. Um, seeing as we have seen about $252 uh, in, in use this year, I'm suggesting 250 And this is, again, kind of a catch-all for we have to, to send somebody out to, to grab paper plates or something like that, or uh, you name it. Um, just miscellaneous junk uh, would fall into this category. Um, I don't want to budget for a refund of prior year revenues uh, simply because I, I want to make sure that we don't, <laughs> we don't do that. Um, we did have $833.52 that were, uh, if memory serves me, it was a return on a, a zoning permit amongst a couple, a couple of other things that uh, somebody ended up not doing a project. I don't know that we have to structurally build that in because that's very much the exception, not the rule. Yeah. Um, so I was suggesting that we, despite having a, an expense in that category, that we treat it kind of as a, an abnormality and, and not budget for that specifically. Okay, that brings our total operating expenses for next year at an anticipated $599,134.46. Uh, if we go back over to the overview tab at uh, a rate of two mils, and don't worry, I'll, I'll zoom in. Um, that was way too far. <laughs> Um, there we go. Uh, let me zoom out just slightly. No, come on. <laughs> it's, it's the mouse. It's my mouse just being difficult. Okay. 
Okay, based on a millage of two mils, we would have 609,000 in the general fund. If we go down here to the difference, uh, we would have a surplus of about $10,000 in the general fund next year. And uh, for anybody that is concerned about these red numbers here, uh, I will touch on that in just a second. It's actually not a cause for alarm. They're normal and intentional and uh, would not result in any sort of overdraft. So uh, in, in the purposes of laboring under a balanced budget, that 10,000, do we want to add additional funds to the road projects like that 80,000 that we had under roads? Uh, or do we want to allocate that extra 10,000 to the building repairs, maintenance and improvements? Or do we want to split it so that it's 85 and 45? I'd split it. Um, the, the one thing that, that I would potentially like to discuss before we do that is one of the, the areas for general improvement and just better use of the building, and I know Sue has expressed an interest in this, is um, getting the, the trucks out of the garage and getting that repurposed into office space. We would then, in order to do that, we would have to build a new spot for the trucks. Wouldn't have to be anything overly fancy. We could get a, a pole barn sort of situation, get some prices, see if there's grants that we can do. Um, there's one that, if memory serves me, is actually a DEP grant around uh, buying facilities and equipment for things like uh, uh, leaf and like tree limb recycling that a lot of townships do that they'll provide grant funding if you do that. Um, might be something to worth uh, be worth looking into so that we could potentially set up an area behind where like the salt shed is for the truck storage as well as like behind that or off to the side of that uh, composting for, for the community. Because um, that might be a, an ideal opportunity to get uh, get the total cost of that project offset. Um, and the reason I bring that up is that's going to be a lot more in the, the building maintenance and addition as opposed to the the, the highway construction. If we actually are going to go down that avenue, I think it's certainly doable. It's certainly achievable. Um, grants will make it certainly a lot easier, but it is going to be a, a relatively high dollar figure in the grand scheme of things, especially if we have to do matching funds for any grants. I'm all for it. Okay. In that case, I will scroll up a little bit and I will change the building repair uh, repairs and maintenance services. I might want to rename that category to be a little more broad too for just generally things about the building, but uh, I'm going to increase that to 50,000. And if we go back to the overview, we are operating at a surplus of only $841.34 in the general fund for next year as a proposal. I'm good with that. Okay. Um, I mean, we could do a 100% balance, but I don't, I don't see that as being particularly effective. I'd rather be there rather than anywhere else. Um, and just for the sake of argument, if even at our current usage, if we reduce that to 1.9, 1.9 is about $11,500 difference between the two, we'd be short about $10,000. So I, I really think just to, to circle back to the original statement when we first started reviewing the budget that we should keep the millage and the street light front footage the same. Uh, as I feel this works pretty well from a budgeting standpoint. Um, the street lights, as we had talked about very early on, uh, we're actually intentionally undercutting the street light fund to try to bring the total balance down. And uh, there's really only one thing that we can use that, that fund for and it's street lights. So unless we're adding additional street lights or replacing the LED things, which we shouldn't have to do for a very long time, the only expenses that are going to come into that fund are going to be the actual electric bills for the streetlights. Mm -hmm. um, the state fund shows a massive de deficit, but that's because we're expected to wildly exceed our incomes next year because of the large project that has been pushed off a couple of years. So we're only bringing in a small amount, but then we're, we're potentially dropping like $485,000. So that's actually completely normal, will not result in a, an overdraft of the fund. It's just the, the, the profit and loss reflection of incomes versus expenses. Um, 
now that we've gone through this in what I would call painstaking detail, um, Sue, Jim, Irene, do you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the budget? Thank you for taking my brief <laughs> format and making it a lot more palatable. I really appreciate it. Uh, happy to do it and needs to be done. So um, the only thing I think that we really need to do is there's a couple of spots that I have highlighted here. Just we need to go into QuickBooks and see what what the, the forecasted amounts are, uh, as well as, like I said, the recycling and collection. Um, I need to put something in, in there. And I can, for example, if it's more than $841, I can tune that a little bit on one of the other categories. Like, for example, the, the money that we had just placed into the building repairs and, and additions, I can tweak that so that it's, it's balanced. But um, I did not have that. So our, our takeaway item between now and Thursday, sooner rather than, than later would be best, um, would be to, to let me know what we've actually spent okay. on, the, on the recycling. Um, otherwise, I think, I think we have a, a pretty fully formed budget in the sense that it, it would be ready for acceptance and advertising. What was the, was there a category number for recycling? Sure, it, it is 426. 426.00. Okay, I'll take a look at it, see if there's anything in there. Okay. Um, if there isn't, the, the next, the follow-up question would be, as we've paid that, what other fund did that come in and out of? Okay. Um, you need to click on something else. Yeah, and it's just, it's really for no other reason just to, to, to make sure that we're, we're budgeting appropriately so that we know, okay, we spent $1,500 or $800 or whatever the, the underlying cost was for the recycling in 2020. Yep, and I'll just need you to help me set up the new chart of accounts and make sure everything's in the right category. And again, thanks to Dan, Dan went through and has recreated a cheat sheet for us on that, so. Awesome, and good work, Dan. Thank you very much for doing that. Thank you. Okay, that is the last item on the agenda, unless there are additional <laughs> questions, comments, or concerns. Thank you. Thank you a ton. And I really appreciate you putting that up on the screen. It makes it a lot easier for all of us to follow it. So yeah, yeah I think by and yeah. large, it's a, a very good collaborative way to do it. Uh, okay. It also gives people uh, at home uh, a much easier way to follow along than having to leaf through papers oh, and, and, and things like that. Uh, and because of this being recorded, we have a, an irrefutable and immutable record of, of us doing this in, yeah. in, again, like I said, painful detail. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. That's what it should be done. Absolutely. Yep. It shouldn't be a blanket statement. It should be a good discussion and a good review. And that's what we did. Okay. Um, the one last thing that I'd, I'd like to do on budgets before we completely crest off of that is uh, I know I had asked everybody to, to kind of get together a wish list of, of things um, as it's going to fit into the budget that we just discussed. Um, just real high level, just to, to kind of to spark the conversation. I would like to see us put a, a high priority on road work, which I think everybody's in agreement with. Uh, building repairs and just general uh, efficiency improvements, finishing up the soffits and fascia, trying to get uh, replacement windows finally, uh, putting in the drop ceiling like we had talked about, which is going to help save money on the heating, uh, removing the old heating system and, and getting that decommissioned, uh, general improvements in accessibility, uh, working on improving the office space, potentially repurposing the garage as it exists now to that. Um, if, if we can find the grant money, an elevator, and uh, just in case there's any ambiguity or questions there, we're not talking about financing an elevator out of pocket. That's just crazy talk, um, simply because they're, they're way too expensive for us to, to organically finance. This is something that we, we would be considering with grants and really with grants only, um, but it would open a lot of opportunities to use the second floor of the building that we just simply don't have present. Uh, to put it lightly, it's not an ADA compliant space in any stretch of the imagination, uh, even once you're up there, let alone getting up there. Um, the other thing that I wanna see us uh, get prepped for, uh, hence the multimedia budget and some other smaller line items is, as we start to return to doing meetings in the building, I wanna make sure that we can continue to do this format of meeting in addition to the in-person, that way they're still up on YouTube, people can still watch them from home. 
um, which would require us to get things like microphones so that the people can effectively hear us, a camera so that people can see us, uh, potentially a screen or a projector for behind us. That way, if there's a map or something that we're presenting, that it can be shown in large scale. Um, potentially maybe like a laptop or a tablet doesn't have to be anything fancy. That way we can switch over to using the, the meeting agenda and materials in a digital format rather than having Sue print a ton of stuff out, um, as well as some, some network infrastructure and digital file storage improvements. Um, those, are, those are the things that I had on, on mine. Irene, do you have anything? Ditto. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Jim, is there anything that you want to highlight or add to that? No. Okay. Sue? Is there anything that I haven't covered on, on the, the stuff that you had relayed to me on, on a wish list format? Well, um, just keep in mind, too, that the, um, on the building maintenance, um, eventually the, the, the now entry door, that's going to need some repair work. Yeah, we actually, we had talked about that earlier in the year and just mm -hmm. never got around to it. But mm -hmm. I, I still want to replace that with an appropriate sized door because no judgment, but it has not stood the test of time the way they put that in and the whole wall moves mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the door, which should well, not well, happen. That, that, <clears throat> it's originally ago, much that, wider. That originally was a double door, just yeah. like the double door in the garage. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what that was. And they made it just one door. And I mean, you'd have to still make that uh, wheelchair compliant and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. But that um, it's getting worse and worse. So just keep that yeah. in mind. Too. I think, at least my personal assessment of this is once we get the windows in the office done, the next step would be let's put things out. People obviously aren't going to do that over the winter, but let's put the line out for first thing in the spring, having somebody do the, the replacement of that door. And and quite honestly, the, the door that's to the garage that the guys go in and out of, it's functional, but it's, it's really starting to show its age. So yeah, it might not be a bad idea to, to do yeah. the two doors at the same time. Actually, you might get a discount with someone mm -hmm. in the winter time. So you oh, don't that, that. necessarily delay it because I know a lot of contractors are looking for work in the winter and they'll okay. discount you a certain percentage, so. Okay, so that I, I would say as a group, let's make that a, a, an agenda item going forward is let's discuss door replacement. Sure. Um, so on the, the topic of the windows, we'll run it. Uh, let me know as soon as you get a, an ETA on that because then I'll, I'll make it a point of coming in and moving the office equipment. I don't want to do that too premature because it's going to be a kind of a, uh, an upset for you having to to, to relocate and, and and everything there so i want right. to do that as close to the 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 target date as possible and then ideally move you back in as close to completion as we can well uh, we haven't we've not gotten a call from mike yet but i was my thought was once we plan a commission the 17th board meeting thursday the 19th and then try to start moving stuff of course then i'm not in the office for a week um um, but, you know, maybe gradually start to move stuff over there. Butch has volunteered to help move, you know, tables, desks, yeah. whatever. So Yeah, we can certainly move, like, files, things like that are going to be easy, but I, I don't want to necessarily tear apart your desk and the computer system. Mm -hmm. it, 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 honestly, it might be an okay time to do it while you're on vacation, but um, I don't want to disrupt your normal day-to-day -day for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, honestly, my thought was just, take the office and set it up the exact same way in that room <laughs> along yeah. that wall where the where the receptacles are and you know we can still function yeah for a couple of weeks. yeah yeah so like i said well we'll we'll do that at at some point preceding the windows but uh, again like i said my my standpoint is try not to disrupt your your business as usual for as long as we possibly can mm -hmm. that way we can we can move you out move you back and have it only be a couple of days of inconvenience rather than a couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That concludes that. I don't have any additional comments. Uh, Irene, do you have any comments? Just a quick update on the um, uh, safety gear for the road crew and stuff. I did look into the different kinds of vests. I think everyone had in mind like a sleeveless vest when it comes to a safety vest. Those are the class two. Class three are the ones that have sleeves and I don't think anyone wants that. The only added point is it gives us more reflectivity at night, but hopefully we're not engaging in a nighttime operation all that often. So, um, uh, and if John's the head of something, there's gonna be plenty of light lighting. So, um, 
so so far i i've looked into two companies actually both have come in under 500 dollars. the only caveat with that is that they can't do printing on any of the items because the order number is too low so i reached out actually to rock hounds apparel to see if if what their numbers are like and if it's within budget and not too far off we might just stick with rock hounds so we could get things labeled so it says marion township and go from there so i'm just waiting for a response from them uh call kelly or like at some point connect with kelly because i know they did the mtca t-shirts through company Okay. And I think that a lot of it may have been donated, but I, I, I got the impression that the, the overall price, had it not been either offset or, or comped, was, right. was quite good. Um, so it might be worthwhile to find out who they were, they were dealing sure. with. Sure. Yeah, but I was pleasantly surprised. There's lots of online sales, et cetera. So, I mean, even accounting for some extra t-shirts and uh, stuff, it, I, was, I was pleasantly surprised things came in under $500. Good. Yeah. Very good. Again, I, I much I much prefer things to come in under budget. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Um, anything else, Irene? No, thank you. Okay. Jim, do you have any? Nothing. Okay. Sue, do you have any comments? Nothing. Okay. Fantastic. In that case, I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 11.38 a.m. I'll second that. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. All right. Okay, meet me adjourned. Thank you everyone for being here. And uh, for those who are going to be out at the township building helping me do garage cleanup today, I'll, I'll see you shortly. Thank you, Peter. Okay, take care, Thank everyone. You, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.